All right, we're live. Thank you, everyone, for coming and watching. I, I'm, this is why Monday Night Draw was good. I knew the title, so I could say thanks for coming for a Monday Night Draw. But this is Drawing with Tyler Kirkham, who uh, I don't know how we managed to get him. I am thrilled. He's an incredible artist. All of you know his work. Uh, he's been both at Marvel and DC, and he's done Green Lantern and Venom, Superman, and tons and tons of stuff. So, uh, and tons of covers too. Incredible, incredible covers. So uh, I'm really excited to uh, get to talk to him about his process. I mean, uh, we've known each other, Tyler, for a long time. No, yeah, man. I mean, hey guys, uh, thank you so much for having me on here. By the way, Dave, it's it's a pleasure, man. I love your I love your show, dude. I'm, I'm a huge Thank fan, you. man. Honestly, like I've always been a huge fan, by the way. Um, but I mean, we're you know we're old cow alum, so I mean, I I never got to work with you in this like the studio setting, but you know you came in a few times when I was when I was young and kind of interning, and um, I was like, oh, you know, whenever you would come around, it was like, hey, Dave, Dave Finch is coming, in. Dave Finch is coming in today, and like, <laughs> all yeah, because I, I was a little bit older. <laughs> <laughs> you, were the, you were the generation before before yeah. me, I think. Um, and then Top Cat had just moved offices, and um, I don't know, were you out there? Were you working in the studio and stuff like, for a while, the bullpen? Yeah, well, I was there for six years, uh -huh. uh, and I left um, the end of 99, so around summer 90, what, around then. So um, oh. it, when did you start? Uh, I, I was there, I think, around 2002. Okay, so, so it was a little bit. Yeah, I just pat. I, I just missed you. You know what I mean? Like I missed yeah. you, Turner, like Benitez, um, uh, Billy Tan. Like you know what I mean? Like some of those guys who were part of your, I guess, your generation, right? Like Brian Chin. Yep, Brian Chin. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a whole bunch of us. We were all really kind of in the same room, uh, and it was a great place to learn. I'm sure it was for you too. You know, you had oh. your own group that you came up with i remember and uh, i don't want to embarrass you with this but i remember i don't know if it was your first convention but certainly one of your first conventions your mother was there she was so thrilled like you know you had a whole bunch of people waiting for you you know because you really hit the ground running so yeah it was cool to see yeah no that sounds about right man like there there was a time where um you know i was trying to break into the industry and, and my parents were cool enough to to you know take me out to san diego comic-con and like there was a vegas convention and like you know, they would, I'd be like, can you guys go do something while I wait in this line, you know, and try to get my portfolio reviewed. And, um, I would, you know, I would wait. I remember waiting for like Renee Gearlings. Yeah. Um, I, I remember talking to Mark, um, you know, Jim Lee back in the day, trying to get my, my art reviewed and stuff. Um, but yeah, then I got, you know, I got an internship out there. Like, um, uh, luckily I was working on an independent book and, and, Renee was the editor on this book. It was called The Gift. And um, she was editing The Gift. And um, she said, hey, you know, I, I know this artist. He's a young artist. He's, he's getting, you know, he's getting fairly good. And, and she hired me to do the book, The Gift. And I just kept in touch with her. Like, she was like my, my, my <clears throat> foot in the door. Like, she helped me with everything. She kept, you know, you know pointing me in the right direction. And then... Finally, I was like decent enough to come in and actually like meet Mark. <laughs> so I, I came in and, and you know he's like, hey, I see some potential here. You know, if you can move out here, you can come in here. You can just come work in, in the office or in the studio on the yeah. book that you're working on. And it was kind of it was always a little bit of a weird situation because I was working on a book that wasn't Top Cow yet. Mark was helping me, and he was like teaching me and like you know pointing, doing you know pointing things out and like. Yeah. yeah, which it is, is stressful, but yeah. such a big help. But, you know, totally. before we, because uh, we're going to be drawing, everyone, yeah. so I don't want to, you know, go too far into it, but we, um, we're we also here because Tyler has uh, his new book on Indiegogo called Final Boss. There is a link, I think, at the top of the chat, but there's also a link in the description here, so please check it out. Uh, support Tyler, and uh, I'm sure I saw actually in the chat that a lot of people have already supported it, which is great. And uh, Eric, you're here, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, you've been quiet so far, but uh, you have a, a video from Tyler, is that right? It was for Final Boss. Do you have that? Yeah, yeah let me All go right, ahead so and share that real quick. Give me a second here. All right, awesome. I'm gonna. This is high tech right here. I'm gonna make them big. Here we go. Okay. 
You Wait. see that up here? Yep. When video games and comic books collide, you get Final Boss, the ultimate fighting game graphic novel experience, forced to compete in underground fighting games to make a living. Disgraced former special operative Tommy Grayson discovers he has inherited supernatural powers. Following in the footsteps of his grandfather, who told war stories of discovering an ancient temple on a remote island sanctuary devoted to a forgotten deity, a demigod that possesses the power to grant supernatural gifts to the warriors who could best him in battle. Tommy sets out to trace the origin of his newfound powers. He discovers fighting not only triggers more intense reactions, but he gains power and levels up with each victory. He also finds a fist to the face can solve a lot of problems. Now, Tommy must earn his way to the island by competing in fight after fight so he can find out if the stories are true and who really is the final boss. That is absolutely crazy. <laughs> if I ever get to do something on Indiegogo or uh, Kickstarter, it's not going to look that good. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. That's <laughs> well, I, I mean, the artwork yeah, is beautiful. There's no way I can do that. I, I hired a team, actually, that, that's like amazing at video production work. Um, they're called Geekvised, actually, and they're, they're, they're out of Florida, Miami, Florida. And, and I got lucky enough to meet them through, you know, other friends. And I hire them to do all sorts of stuff now. I mean, they're, they're amazing, dude. Like, so if you ever oh, need yeah. any, any sort of ads or commercials or something, <laughs> I've already forgotten, so I will email you on that. Yeah, because that was yeah. amazing. And before we go on to, we have a super chat from Myjo Myjo for five dollars. Thank you so much. And he says, "Dave, I just wanted to say you're a really good artist, and I'm watching from the hospital. So thank you for your help with comic uh, art. Stay up. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, hopefully you're recuperating in the hospital, and um, yeah." You're back with us soon and drawn away and, you know, maybe drawn in the hospital too. So I think I'm going to switch my camera here. Uh, yeah, me too, actually. And uh, we're going to get started. And so... Um, All right, Dave, I'll duck out and then uh, I'll catch up with you later. Okay, we'll see you in just a bit. And yep. uh, we're also, I told Eric earlier, we're, we're not going to warn him. <laughs> we're just going to put his artwork up there, so... <laughs> <clears throat> Might as well make it uncomfortable. So I decided that I wanted to draw a masked vigilante. Uh, and let me fix this here. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. We lost, uh-oh, we lost Tyler. <laughs> we'll figure this out, hopefully. Oh, here he is. Okay. Yeah, sorry, man. Yeah, like, I did this with Eric the other day. I actually hit back. Okay. Instead of uh, instead of just trying to go to the main homepage. It, yeah, well, and before we started, I was I was telling you that, you know, when I'm on my own doing these, I just I run aground. I don't know what to say. And, uh, yeah, when yeah. your camera disappeared, I thought, uh oh, this is uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, man. Like, I, I was trying to get – so I know there's a way to get back to the home page, right, to where I can see – no, I can see you. Never mind. I'm in there. I'm in there now. Perfect. Yep. It looks like you got your board up. I just sw switched my camera. Hopefully people can see that as well. But um, I was kind of sketching a couple of different poses as I was chatting with you, man. Like, oh, oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Was, you know, when we, you know, when I jumped in, we were saying, hey, who should we draw? And, uh, you know, Mass Vigilante was, was kind of who we thought would be really cool. And, and I can tell everyone a little bit about the character. Um, if you, if any of you guys follow me on, on Instagram or other social media um, platforms, I've actually used the Mass Vigilante name and, and um, the logo and stuff like that for, Kind of a t-shirt line like a, a merch line actually but what everyone didn't know is it was always based on the character that was going to be in final boss but i just like the reason that i wanted to do a character like that is because i i'm kind of known for drawing characters like deathstroke red hood and, mm -hmm. and you know 
basically mass vigilantes, and those are my favorite type of characters. I love drawing like Deadpool whenever I get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I had a character that was mass, you know, a mass vigilante. Like, you know, I, I love that. That's the exact type of characters that I like to draw. So um, I wanted to create one for final, you know, a, a mysterious character for Final Boss that was always popping up in the background and you didn't ever really know who it was but has a really big part in the story later on um but she's you know she's got these crazy skills cool weapons and just um you were always, you you would always see her like popping up helping the main characters saving their lives you know jumping in at just the right time and almost like guiding them in a direction that they should go but you don't ever know who it is, you know, and they're always curious who it is, but she always disappears before they ever get a chance to like talk to her or question her. So I just like that idea. And I, you know, I wanted to make, I wanted to make it a female and I wanted to make her mask. So um, I'm going to go with this little layout here, I think. Nice. And actually here, I'll, I'll show you mine. Uh, there's no way for me to show it. Wait. Can I show you oh, without nice. showing yeah. how messed yeah, up my desk is? Look at it beyond. I've got paper on my desk. Beyond it, it's all paint. And anyway, so this is the layout that I did uh, is just that about on half your desk? Did you, Is that layout on your actual actual desk? Or is that... No, I've got a, a big sheet of paper, and I, I change it out all the time. Uh, oh, okay. Just I felt like it looks a little, you know, more professional. <laughs> so uh -huh. you know, than uh, my desk. I've had this thing since. Uh, since I was 20, when I first decided I wanted to start drawing, and it's a cheapo desk, but I'm superstitious, so Dude, it's my I desk want, forever. I, want, I really need one of those, um, the uh, stand-up desks that can kind of electronically raise. Have you seen Oh, one? yeah. Yeah, I have. Where you can stand, and yeah, well, obviously where you can stand. Yeah, I, I talked to, um, oh, man. Anybody that, that watches the stream, you guys know I'm the worst with names. I talked to another artist who's, who's having trouble with his back and he's been using it. And I've actually, I find I get uncomfortable if I'm sitting at a desk too long. And so I actually draw on my couch 90% of the time. Uh, we oh, have got a, a little mason or something? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We nice. have a, a super chat from SCS Powerlifting. Good to see you again for $5. Thank you so much. And he says, spent all day drawing and time to relax and watch the pros do it. <laughs> well, thank you. We will try <laughs> uh, to not screw it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's always a possibility when there are people watching. It's just a reality. I mean, you probably, you must be pretty comfortable with it now, right? I mean, you've done quite a few of these episodes to where, I mean, have you ever messed up where you're like, oh man, I really don't like what I did there, but I'm going to just kind of work through it? Yeah, I've had a few where I've, I've messed up. Like, I, I try and make it kind of work in pencils. Like, it's already, it's actually not working right now. But, you know, it's easy enough to fix right now. It's harder when I switch to ink and yeah. Uh, yeah, I've had that. And then I've had times, um, I did a Superman. I was really happy with it. And somebody pointed out that the head was too big. And it, I mean, it was like, it was oh, <laughs> so big. Angle, you know? <laughs> <Just kidding>. So <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. No, so, uh, <clears throat> well, I was going to say, man, there's a, um, do you guys, well, you're, you're in Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. So do you do you, have, do you have Sam's Club there, like the big like the big box Sam's Club stores? I don't I don't think we have Sam's Club. We have Costco. Costco? Okay, okay. Because there's a I just saw it two days ago. There's a there's one of those um, um, electronic desks, man, that you can actually raise it and and lower it. It plugs yeah. in, and and you can. Um, the only problem with it though is it didn't tilt. It didn't have the like the artist you know architecture. Oh and yeah, that would which, which wouldn't work. Man, so. Yeah, my desk is pretty flat, but it's not you know working on a flat desk, and you get distortions in your drawing when you do that too, which is always a always a problem. Mm -hmm. We have Kevin Mandevil here. Good to see you. He says Mass Vigilante from Tyler Boss's final project. The final, Tyler's final boss project. Normally, I, I have Meredith for our Monday yeah. draw, Tyler, and she is so much better at this. <laughs> oh man, that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Tell McGard is here. It's good to see all you guys. One Mighty R. One Mighty R says Costco got free food samples. Yeah. You know, the problem with the free food samples is everybody lines up there and you just want to get past and those carts are enormous. And yeah, 
Are they still doing this? I noticed that, that my local ones, they stopped doing it, you know, when COVID came around or whatever. They, they uh, I had to have to admit, I haven't, I haven't been in, you know, know, a year and a half, so I don't know. <laughs> Your membership lapsed, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, it actually probably has. Yeah, we, uh, um, I actually used to work at Sam's Club dude. before, right before I was an art, like started doing art professionally. I was one of those dudes out there pushing, pushing carts in. And oh yeah. That was my, uh, my gig, man, for a little while. <laughs> it's a job. It is. Yeah. It isn't bad, actually. So you, let's, I want to ask you a little couple of things. So you're still, you, okay. So you use a lot of the lead holder pencils still, right? Do you ever use like mechanical stuff or you kind of manage to sharpen your pencil? Man? I sharpen it, which is a hassle. I saw you using a mechanical pencil and it's so much better but I press too hard and I can't help it. I've tried to fight it and I finally just went, you know what, I'm better off using mm -hmm. one of these. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but yeah, as much as I love these pencils, um, what Tyler has is is arguably a better pencil to use. because it. I mean, this is like kind of what you have, right? But it's a lead holder, but. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, From I, mean, a, I do, I do use a lot of mechanical pencils though, actually. Okay. But, yeah, looking at it, I thought it was mechanical. So yeah, we're using the same yeah, type pen. Uh, but, this is actually out of lead, though, man. I don't have any more refills, so. Um, so that's why. Yeah, that's pretty much why, man. So, uh, final boss, how uh, how did that idea come about? Yeah, man. Uh, so, it's really just everything that I loved growing up. Honestly, I was like, if I'm going to do my own book, I want to tell a story that I would have loved, that I would love now. I would have loved, you know, getting into comics. Um, and that would bring some nostalgia back, you know, to maybe people that are my age or, or just people that are kind of looking for that. Just kind of no hold barred action uh, adventure, right? Like yeah. I, I wanted to just, I love, you know, I love games, like I love comics and I love action movies. And I wanted to develop some, some characters that were all, kind of based around that that world and and my first thought was i want to create <laughs> something that is almost like a classic jean-claude van damme film meet you know meets yep. like street fighter right because i just but just the stuff that i love right just yeah creating characters that you want to know more about and you want to, you can only hope that you can flesh them out because when you play these games or you, you know, you never, unless they release a movie like Mortal Kombat or something, you always want to know more about them, but you never really get to unless they release some sort of other medium, right? So I thought, well, I'm going to kind of do that world, but I'm going to do like a graphic novel, uh, tell it, tell the story in a graphic novel format so that I can actually flesh out some of these characters. Um, yeah, and a story beyond just the the ring. Exactly, man. So, um, so I came up with a concept that I really liked, and um, you know, characters, and 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 a way to kind of move it, move the story forward. And um, I just uh, started started coming together, and I was like, you know, maybe I could actually do something with this. And I was like, I, I, this is something that I would love to draw. Because obviously you got to enjoy what you're doing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that maybe other people would would enjoy it. They'd have a good time reading it, and I could leave some open questions for people to to want to come back for more, you know. So that was kind of my goal, man. Well, it's great and incredible character designs. So did you start with uh, the main character, um, Tommy? Tommy Thank Brady. you. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, this, yeah. Actually, this Mass Vigilante was um, designed originally, but I didn't ever have her fully fleshed out because, like I said, I was I was kind of utilizing her as that. I was putting Mass Vigilante on like shirts and merch, you know, merchandise type stuff. So I was using that name as almost like a brand, I guess. Um, right. And then, and then, I sketched up. Tommy, who's basically my Ryu, right? My he's my main character. Yeah. Um, and I, I put a sketch up, and I was like, "Would you get? Would anyone like to see me do a a, a creator owned?" And I, you know, I got a pretty good response. I was like, "Gosh, maybe I really could do this," you know. 
Yeah, it was well, always such a risk. You know, you do, uh, and I'm sure you had a, a great time drawing uh, comics for Marvel and DC, but it's it's a risk to to come off of that and do something where, you know, if it does well, you do great. If it doesn't, you know, the risk is all on you. And exactly. It's always so, a... Um, that's why I was like, if I'm going to do it, it's got to be something that I'm just having a lot of fun doing, you know? Yeah. Um, and and just it really is it's, it's it's rewarding, man. Like, obviously drawing care, you know, popular characters like Superman and Batman and iconic characters like that. That's very rewarding as well. But there's there's just kind of something different about creating. Basically, this is amazing seeing you do this. Like this, you know what I mean? Like seeing you draw this character. Seeing I've got tons of amazing oh, covers by artists and stuff. And it's it's like it's so cool, man. Oh, well, thank you. You know, I, I don't even think I mentioned, but, you know, at some point, uh, I, I'm probably going to be emailing and say, hey, Tyler, you think you no, can maybe... Yeah, it up, man. All right. In, in fact, like, that's actually how I got a lot of the covers that I have. I'm trading, I'm trading other artists. <laughs> I'm like, I, if, if you have something you're developing, I'm happy to do something. I've got something. Let's just do, like, a trade, right? I have, like, I think probably six artists right now that I am waiting for them to tell me what to draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and it's all gonna hit at once i know exactly <laughs> i'll be ready i'll be ready though <laughs> it's definitely a better way to go than you know paying for each one as you go it's a whole lot easier to draw a picture than you know <clears throat> pay for all that stuff when you're trying to finance a book oh man exactly i'd, so rather, have a... I'd rather work it off you know sweat equity that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we have another super chat from my. I, I'm probably saying this wrong. I'm saying my Joe. My it might be my home, my home for ten dollars. Thank you so much. And he says, "Yes, Dave, I'm all right, but I was born with heart problems, and it. Uh, but that's uh, not the cause right now. The doctors are trying to find out why I'm losing a lot of blood. But anyway, uh, what are we drawing? Uh, yeah, well, you know, definitely our thoughts are are with you, um, and hopefully it. Yeah, hopefully it's for something that is quickly and easily resolved. Uh, we're drawing Masked Vigilante from Final Boss. This is Tyler Kirkham's uh, creator own comic. And uh, uh, this is a very, very cool looking character. Uh, you know what? I feel like I should put up the final character, but since we're going to be drawing it, you'll see it as yeah, it goes. So, yeah, exactly. And I'm sure for a lot of you guys, you've already seen this. So um, you know what we're doing. See, I picture her this character as, and, and I don't know if you noticed, Dave, like her her guns, her little her handguns. Like I was like, you know what? I want to do something cool where if she runs out of ammo, it, she I, and I almost want to like add some to a belt where she can just like use this use her clip. You know, maybe she's got these custom made magazines or something that mm -hmm. are a blade, right? They have a blade on them, so like if she if she runs out of ammo, she can quickly do some hand to hand. And if she needs to, you know, get that sucker gets stuck in someone, she's got a couple of extra blades that also could, you know, maybe that are full of ammo that could just, you know, they could lock them in and, and get, you know what I mean? Just well, it's very, it. it's very mass vigilante style. I mean, that's exactly. uh, <laughs> and then I really, I, I, I feel like something that entertainment is missing right now is this kind of project that i mean it has its roots in you know it's really 80s culture you know a lot mm -hmm. of the those video games all that kind of thing and i see so many of those projects come out and they end up being kind of tongue-in-cheek and not respectful and just something done earnestly because people i love this stuff and i don't want to see somebody just you know oh i'm, I'm too smart for you know whatever like I think when people approach superheroes that way, it's a mistake. And so it's it's cool to see a project like that, like this. It's just, you know, it looks like a, a, every character is very fleshed out, a real story. And, you know, something that's not just trying to mm -hmm. send off a, a genre that we love, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. Because um, if I get, you know, I mean, if I, if I get to do all of it, it's going to be a really cool ending you know what i mean like i've got some really really cool stuff planned for uh you know the middle of the series all the way to the end you know um and this is just like so this is just like the, basically i want to picture this as level one stage one so i i tell people to look at this as a video game in a way because that's kind of you know it's, it's basically comic books meets video games so picture this as stage one this first graphic novel 
it gets you through the first boss. And I've got ten bosses I want to, I want to get through. You know what I mean? Getting all the oh, way up that's to the awesome. So Tommy, you know, his whole goal is obviously if he, and this isn't just like a fighting competition. It's not that is part of the story, but there's a whole other side story of him, you know, discovering who he is, how he got his powers, you know, how his grandfather, you know, passed away, where his father is. There's a whole side story that he's personally trying to discover while getting roped into this, you know, fighting tournament to stay alive, basically. So um, I've got a lot of cool things that I want to do. And um, I'm just going to keep, you know, I mean, keep, keep plugging away as long as people like it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully that is for a long time. Yeah. They have not made a good blood sport type movie for since blood sport. Exactly. Man. You know, and, and those are like amazing dude. Blood sport, kickboxer, Lionheart. Yeah, that's just that's just stuff that I just, I grew up on, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. I saw Bloodsport. I don't know how many times. So it looks like you're starting to get some ink. And what are you using there, Dave? What I'm I'm using uh, this is just a Micron. It's zero one. It's the only size I ever use. Uh, and then from there, I, I use my Molotos. That's that's not right. Not yeah. Molotos. We were talking about Molotos earlier. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, Tombos. Yeah. I use yeah. those a lot of them. They have the difference, the the blue one and the gray one, right? Right. Which one do you use? I, I switch back okay. then between them. I never use the the blue one or the I never use the so these ones are blue, the other ones are black, and these ones are gray here. And the softer ones are gold here, and then they're black. And uh, I don't use those for me just because I don't have good hand control and uh, I have trouble with them. So I like yeah, a bit of a firmer. Me too. Me too, man. In fact, let me ask you, you might know this, but you, do you ever use the, the Pentel, Pentel Pilot Runch pen? I did for a long time. Um, and uh, I switched actually to these ones here. Uh, I just found I get a little bit more control. Uh, okay. You know, I don't know if that's superstition though, but I think so. Do they, uh, are, they they are, are they in a, cause I'm looking for something a little bit like basically this exact thing. Yeah, but but stiff <laughs> because I yeah. have a very hard time controlling this as well. It's not better, I'm sure. And mine is—I don't know if you can see how many hairs are hanging off of it. This is the only one I have. Okay. I need to order some more. It's trash, so it doesn't give me any control anyway. But uh, I just find it—I don't know—feels easier to me. And cool. so many times I, I make decisions like a, I have a picture that turned out well, and then I decide that's the way I need to do it forever. Mm. And those are the tools, you know. So Ooh, take that with I, a grain of salt. I buy so many supplies that, that I try one time and then they yep. just sit there. Well, I saw Scott Williams uses, uh, I don't know if I've got it on my desk still. It's a different type of a pen. I, I don't see it. Oh, wait, I do. Reach down. Scott Williams uses these ones. These are Kiritaki, um pens. I don't know. Anyway, they're basically the same as the um, Tombow but I can't get the same detail with him and he swears by him. And, you know, I think it's, it just comes down to a different hand. Yeah. Some people just have better control, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, and we're talking about Scott Williams. So yeah. yeah you know, kind of hard to compare anything there, man. Yeah, right. And I'm sure <laughs> that all you guys know who Scott Williams is, but he is um, the biggest thinker in the business and, and really the originator of the, the West coast style, um, in terms of inking, and it's him, Jim Lee, Wills Potasio, um, were really kind of the center of of that whole uh, kind of anime manga inspired style, but very Americanized. It, it was a lot of John Byrne. There's you know a lot of influences in there. So many that I, I could speculate, but I don't actually really know. Uh, and a lot of that style came from Scott Williams. So he's he's a legend. I've always actually wondered where. And maybe it is Scott Williams. Like, where where did people start? Like er, early image days, and you know, early Mar like before, or I guess not early Marvel days, but the time you know, McFarlands and the Eric Larsons and Liefelds and stuff. Like, where when did they start to I guess discover that they should be adding more detail, or that they could add more detail? I've always wondered that. Like, how did? Because I feel like a lot of people just kind of see see the standard, and they just kind of roll with it you know 
Yeah, and it's so easy to look back on it, and especially you know originators originators of a style, it doesn't look fresh like it did. Like when Jim Lee started doing his X Men stuff, there had never been anything remotely like that before. It was revolutionary, mm. uh, and well, and Tom McFarlane, you know, obviously. I, here's my theory. I think that. Jim Lee, I'm just going to talk about Jim Lee. He was very yeah. influenced by John Byrne. So that was a, a big one. And then um, around the time when he was really kind of coming up uh, and, and starting to get popular, uh, Weapon X came out with Barry Windsor Smith. And a lot of that rendering I, I saw kind of make its way into Jim Lee's work. And there was also um, Art Adams, who was doing incredible stuff with terry austin just you know this really great kind of a it, anime manga inspired i think that kind of was in there you know so there there are a few different things but i, I think it's some of those other artists i know for mark Silvestri, there's uh there's definitely a mike mignola influence oh, in yeah. some of his wolverine stuff so i remember him he, he was saying like mignola, mignola was kind of his main influence or something at one point anyways but yeah, you know, it, Jim Lee would be really interesting to be able to corner and just say, okay, where? Tell me <laughs> how this happened. Not that it even matters. It's, you know, it, it's the work that, but it would be very, just from a, I, I'm just a, such a fan of the medium, you know? Yeah. So right now you're inking and you're, are you going directly in with uh, the brush? Uh, so my, my typical thing is, is I, I'll go in, yeah, with like a, it's almost like that one you were showing, like the little Tombow or whatever. This mm -hmm. has a very similar. This so this is pretty cool. Gosh, this is what brand is this man? I don't even I can't remember, but um, it's got the double sided. So okay, I mainly bought these to go to take them to conventions because then you know I was like, okay, this is perfect for conventions. I got dual tips. I can get through you know sketches or remarks without changing my pen at all. <laughs> but I I typically will do like some thicker stuff like this and then I'll go back in and grab a, a point one like you're doing or a, um, uh, yeah, or this, let's see what I'm doing here. I think this, yeah, the small size of the Faber-Castell, which I think is probably yep. around that, right? Okay. Yeah, oh, it's, I think it's the same. I've got some of those, but by now they're, they're old. So, you know, they don't really work anymore, but they all really do kind of work the same. My favorite are Molotow. Uh, I, you know what? I think they're better. I really do. But it could just be that um, I did a picture that I liked, and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and now you don't want to go back and try. Yep. Well, I mean, if you find something that you like, you might as well just make life a lot easier if you, can, if you know what you're going to get, you know what I mean, every time. It does. And actually, there was somebody in the chat. Oh, hey, Comic Book Bob's here. Good to see you. I think I already said Kevin Mandeville's here, but if I didn't, even if I did, it's good to see you here. Um, and uh, Kevin, uh, Comic Book Bob says Jim took what Mark Silvestri did, started and dialed it to 11. Yeah, you know, and I think that's, there's a lot of truth to that, too. Uh, and you really see uh, Jim Lee's first issue of X-Men was inked by Dan Green. And it's there are a lot of similarities. Now Dan Green obviously had his own hand, so uh, it, it would be similar. But yeah, and I, I think that was probably an influence in there too. I think I was saying something else. I completely forgot. I'm sorry, Tyler. So who who's in the industry first, Jim or, or Mark? I don't I don't even know that. Mark was Mark. Um, yeah, he uh, he worked on Conan. Um, he did actually, and I used to have it. I, I'm sure I still do. I can't find it. But he did a backup story in Moon Knight that I found by accident. When I did Moon Knight, and this is a long time ago, uh, I just bought a bunch of stuff, and there was a Mark Silvestri story in there. I couldn't believe it. Oh, and, <laughs> you know, he's um, my teacher. I respect him immensely. It was not his best work, <laughs> to be totally honest. It was early. Yeah, I'd love to see that, though, man. Yeah, it was very cool. How old is that? Um, I want to say that I think he got in in 82. Okay. Okay. And I think Jim Lee, um, 86 or 88. Okay. Probably, I think more like 86. So, awesome. But I could be wrong. Who was, uh, who was your favorite artist growing up, man? Was it, was it one uh, of those guys or was it someone else? Like, 
It was Mark Silvestri. Oh, okay, cool. cool. And it was a tough thing for me when I started because I was such a huge fan. I just wanted to draw like Mark, and yeah. I couldn't, you know. And and so I uh, early on, I think about just about a year into working at Top Cow, I completely stopped looking at his work and started looking at different artists. Just, you know, I needed to kind of uh, find myself. I'm sure you probably have gone through the same yeah. kind of a thing. I think everyone goes through that like Sylvester stage, man, at, at, at Top Cow, for sure. Yep. So we have a, a super chat from T uh, Tagamo Model Works. Thank you so much. And great to see you here, Tagamo. And he says, just wanted to say hi. Uh, thanks for all you do. And I will definitely check out Tyler's new work. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for that. Uh, it's a phenomenal looking book. It's nice. it's so right up my alley. I'm the worst at those kinds of games, but I still love them. <laughs> exactly. So are you thinking at, oh, you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to put Eric on the spot because it is 836 and let's see how he's coming along. <laughs> you ready, Eric? Here it comes. <laughs> oh, nice. John. It looks like he's drawing a screen fan, right? Right. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's coming along. So are you going to ink this, or are you just going to go straight no, with pencil? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever so what ink do you think? Stuff, Eric? I'm sorry? Do you ever ink your – do you ever go in and ink stuff? Um, man, I haven't inked in so long. I've just been a – you know – penciling trying to show up pencils and then you know dave and i've been painting a lot i think the last time i inked something was oh man probably a year ago okay so I'm, I'm 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 way behind on where i need to be on inks so well and you know what inking is hard enough uh inking in front of people where you can't really erase yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's looking great so far eric well all right by the way the paintings that you guys have been doing or that you've been doing is is, is nuts man i I had no idea. I mean, actually, I didn't know that you could paint because I've seen some of your covers and stuff. Uh, Oops. I thought you should do more. Sorry. Right? <laughs> Sorry, Eric. I was just going <laughs> to. Okay. No, no. Hang on. Here we go. Okay. I'm sorry, Tyler. I'm, I, I'm not good with the buttons. So I, I don't know. Could you? Was I muted there? I don't even, I don't even know. I think if you were muted, it was for like a, a second. Oh, okay. And okay, cool. We have a super chat from 81 Modus. Thank you very much for $2. And he says, Lee and Michael Golden influence his rendering. Or Lee said Michael Golden influence his rendering. Yeah, you know, and I can see that too. And I can tell you that uh, when I first started at Top Cow, it was actually part of Homage Studios. That was Jim Lee's studio with Wills. And, well, it was Mark's too um, for a while there. And uh, uh, Michael Golden was huge there. You know, everybody was looking at a lot of Michael Golden stuff. So I could, I could definitely see that. Yeah, I think I heard that name quite a few times, you know, as someone you should influence, I guess, or someone that you should um, use as reference. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I have to admit, I, I love Michael Golden's artwork. It, you know, sometimes things work for you and sometimes they don't. And I was never able to really integrate that. I, I love it in Todd McFarlane's stuff. Uh, he's incredible. I just yeah. wasn't a style that fit for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like you have a bit of like Mike Mignola though. As far as like your shadows and your your blacks and stuff, I feel like. Uh, oh yeah, he's he a big influence for you. He still is, yeah, yeah, for sure. He's a huge influence. As much as I can, I've you know, the amount of times that I've got a cover to do, especially like a Batman cover or something, and I end up flipping through all my Mike Mignola stuff trying to find an idea. I have been burned that way before. <laughs> I I did a. Um, Anyways, Batman cover, and I copied him so closely. And sometimes I really try not to do that. Anyway, it was so close; it was obvious that it was just oh, a copy. Really? Yeah, <laughs> and I, I I could see it when I was kind of getting closer to being finished. I was like, "Oh wow, I went way too close." And so I was trying to change it, but you know, it was too late. So yeah, did someone notice or something? Yes. Oh yeah, um, bleeding cool yeah. notice. As a matter of fact. <laughs> so yeah. I got busted and it was totally true. I mean, you know, I, I didn't mean to swipe, but I, I swiped. No, I feel like they'll, if anyone though, it's going to be them that notices that type of thing. Yeah, for sure. Hey, are you going to do, um, any of the, I know conventions are kind of coming back around, man. I, are you doing anything this year or next year? And you kind of wait to see what happens. Yeah. I, I've got plans to do some conventions. Um, 
uh, Dallas, it looks like, uh, Toronto, which for sure I'll be able to go to. It's in Canada. Yeah. Uh, I think New York. So a few, I just don't know necessarily that I'll be able to. It's, you know, uh -huh. it's a little up in the air. So are you still using brush? Yeah, I'm still using this, man. Look, I'm about okay, so to I, have to, to I have to ask, yeah. if you don't like something, what do you do now? Like, how do you fix it? Uh, <laughs> um, well, I'd probably just black something out. Okay. Yeah. Try to, like, you know what I mean? Like if I was like, oh, I don't know if I'd like that, I'd probably try when to add a big, a big black spot or like, you know, I don't really know, man. At this point, I would try to fudge it, I think. I don't I don't think I'd be starting over really. Oh, point. no. Yeah, no. And look, by the way, it looks great. <laughs> I don't mean to suggest yeah. it, but I'm just, I'm curious because I start with the thinnest pen that I have just because I know if I don't like something, I can just bring out my, uh, oh, my yeah, way out. Okay. It's that's easier point, to, but yeah, I guess I, huh, that's actually a really good, good reason why that you should do that, man. But notice that I, haven't, like, I haven't filled in any of the stuff that I did would suck with this. Yeah. Like the hands, the face, the eyes, like these are just like shapes that I know I'm going to keep. Yeah. Yeah. You know where you I mean? can be confident that it's going to work. Exactly. So typically I wouldn't even go in and start doing this unless I was happy with like the basic pose and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with the basic pose all the time and then I'm not. And it's too yeah. late. Now. <laughs> yeah, no, that definitely happens, man. But I have, I have actually been relying a little bit on digital help. Um, like if, if I'm, let's say I, I scan this and I'm like, oh gosh, it's, I really don't like that arm or whatever. And I, and I just can't stand it. I'll, I'll tip, maybe I'll go in and, and use the liquify tool or something. Oh yeah. To, to, you know, get it to where I'm happy with it. And then maybe go back and fix it if I ever have to, but it's just. Yeah. It's, it's a good tool. Well, I, I know. Um, you know, drawing a, a comic, like a monthly comic, it is so helpful just to be able to go in and, and fix something when you get like an editorial note. I, I had one point with Batman where a character was in there that ultimately couldn't be in there. And, you know, I'm sure you've had that happen. Uh -huh. so, so we have a super chat from Story by Osmosis for uh, $10. And he says, hey, bros, uh, one for Dave and Tyler. I'm creating my first long-term graphic novel protagonist. How do you create the right visual identity to go the distance for your story? You know, I, uh, first of all, I want to point out that, you know, it's against the rules to promote your book. But that was such a good question. <laughs> and I really appreciate that. That was actually a great question. So we'll allow it. Uh, you, I'll, I'll, let me answer this first, man, just because it's fresh. Oh, no, this one's, this one's for you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, with me, the first thing that I, that, I was, that I knew that I had to do was come up with a look that, and this isn't for Mass Vigilante. It's for you know, Tommy Brazen, who's the, who's the main protagonist. I knew that I needed to have a look that ha I hadn't seen before, really, like with a mask. Yeah. I was like, well, there's a lot of masks and, you know, superheroes and comics. I don't know if I've seen, I mean, you got the Ninja Turtles mask, you got all the different type of superhero masks that go over the eyes. And I was like, have I seen one that goes over the, the whole forehead? I mean, you got your grifter mask and you got, like I said, the Ninja Turtle thing where it just goes over the eyes. But I don't know if I've seen one that has like the Batman nose, <laughs> like where it covers the eyes and then it also goes over his nose. And it could look like Batman if it was just that segment mm -hmm. uh, or just that section or whatever. So I, I knew that I wanted to have a cool like design for the face that would be, you know, uh, fun to draw and, and, and recognizable, hopefully at some point. And then I wanted, um, <laughs> this is a funny thought, but I was like, I, I need a costume that people can cosplay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Funny thought, but it, it's so important, you know? Yeah, that's actually something that stopped me on so many ideas. It's just so difficult to come up with something that is because it needs to be simple. It needs to have a good silhouette. People could recognize it right away. And yeah, it's very tough. And I feel like all these characters really, you know, you hit that. Thanks, man. Yeah. And I have some really cool, you know, or just early sketches of a lot of the other bosses and stuff um, that I, you know, like I need to flesh them out and get them colored and stuff, but because uh, I've always just loved like video, like fighting game character design. Like I, 
back in school, I would I would create my own um uh the character selection screens. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Like oh, I, yeah. so basically I'd have my own you know, I was basically trying to create my own fighting game way back in junior high. And uh, that was another reason why I was like, I got to I gotta do this because I've just always loved that. I've always just loved, like, the characters in those games and stuff. Yeah, for sure. So we have a super chat from 81 Modus for $5. Thank you very much. And he says, love raw pencils and uh, own upwards of 30 sketch art books. Uh, Tyler's separation is one of the best. Tyler, who's the character? With translucent, uh, tran <laughs> maybe you can read it, Tyler. <laughs> translucent wings. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, that that was a character that I was developing actually back at Tokyo. Um, it was a book called Downfall, and it's a it's like an angel, you know, that gets it basically gets kicked out, and he has to redeem himself. But I unfortunately I never really got around to um, developing it much further than that it's something that i wouldn't mind doing more uh, at some point but <laughs> yeah it's a cool idea it's, it's uh, the amount of ideas that i've had and i thought this is it and you know five months later i can't even remember the idea and so you know it's yeah. it's tough i've got no, a no, there, there's so many that i've got in my head or written down that i it's just such a loose thing that i'll never do anything with it but Downpool yeah. was close. I mean, it was it was to the point where you know Top Cal was actually putting him in preview solicitations of of books that were coming up mm -hmm. because I was you know we were, we had talked about developing it and doing something, but uh, I ended up getting you know getting uh, the contract at DC and and jumped over and started doing Green Lantern stuff, and I just never never went back to developing it, you know. Yeah, that's how it goes. The, I went to Marvel. I had just done Aphrodite Nine. Um, and I thought, hey, I can just come up with something else, no problem. And you know, uh, I went to Marvel, and that was the end of it. I had not done, I have not done Crater Run since. I'm, at, well, I'm working on one now, but you know, before that. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, did you, did you guys, or did you actually create um, Ascension? Was that, or are you court creator of that? Or I always wanted to ask you that. Um. Co-creator, in the sense that I had the idea, I was a big fan of Rick Barry's painting. Uh, he's a fantasy artist, uh, and he did a lot of digital stuff, really kind of was very cutting edge with it uh, back in the day. Uh, he had a, a picture in Spectrum. I just thought it was very, very cool. And so, anyway, it was totally based on that. And I was also looking at, um, he's a very, I can't. Tyler, I'm so bad with names. I am too, man. So. Yeah. Anyway, he was probably the biggest illustrator of all time. So here we go. I can't remember his name. Um, from the 1800s. Oh, 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 my. Okay. You're talking about... Um... Gustav Dore. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, I had a bunch of his stuff. Paradise Lost, that kind of thing. And so I was looking at that. And uh, I had some sketches. But as always, I end up with sketches and no story idea. And I was at the studio late with Matt Banning. And uh, we started talking about it and he had all these great ideas and it just kind of bounced back and forth. The next thing you know, we had a story like, well, this is image, right? So we had a story in <laughs> two hours. <laughs> oh, so co-created. I, okay, yeah, I, knew, I knew that Matt had something, you know, was put part creator too, but I just didn't know if it was something that like, I don't know, you know, you guys had worked up with, with Top Cow or Sylvester or something. You know what I mean? I was curious. Like, yeah, no, that was that was totally us. I mean, it, it started with me, but uh, you know, it, Matt, yeah. um, it, he really helped me put it together and uh, cool. uh, helped write a bunch of it too. So yeah, it's definitely. How many, how many issues was that in the end? Um, I think it went to twenty four issues, twenty five, something like that. I I was on it for six or seven issues. This is you know what I was young and uh, uh, the book was doing well, and you take things for granted, you know. So. I have regrets, yeah. but because you probably you probably got pulled off to maybe do something else, or you had a different opportunity, and you're like, oh, I want to draw that character or something, right? Um, no, I just wanted to quit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had no good reason, you know. So I, I quit. I did uh, a couple little things, and then I I did after ninety nine. I quit that even sooner. Uh, I okay. just yeah, I was young and lazy, you know. It, it took me a bit of time to. I worked so hard when I first started. Um, it was all I did. I, I worked so hard and I think I burnt myself out. So, 
Yeah, well, I, dude, I remember we were talking um, back when you were doing your Marvel stuff. Um, what was that? It was like a fireman book or something at Marvel. Um, oh, yeah, Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was called Call of Duty. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and we just were, were like, gosh, this would be a brutal book to, to draw. Like we, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it really was. It was, yeah. it, I'm going to be honest. It was, it was a little tough to be excited about doing. You yeah, know? That's, that's kind of what we were saying. Oh, this would be, you know, but we, we really, um, noticed that like you're, you're putting your all into it because we knew that it was going to get, get you to better things i guess you know that was my hope with it it really was i, I it was six issues and i just kept telling myself you know what just do your best do your best because you know every work that you do every job you do is is like um a resume for your next job you know and mm -hmm. and uh so yeah i was i was so happy i did x-men after that and it, it was yeah. <laughs> like you know one of the greatest days of my life yeah i think and, it was just like hey let's let's test this guy out or something right well, they were really leery about hiring me, truthfully. Oh, really? uh, we have a, a super chat from Evil One for $5. Thank you very much. He says, when did Tyler and you uh, exactly start working on The Darkness? And do either of you have any stories working on it? And Final Boss is a great idea, Tyler. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it, dude. Um, how many issues of The Darkness did you Did you do a lot of issues, or did you just do, like, fill-in stuff, Dave? I didn't even do fill-ins. I did... Um, uh, uh, about five pages of an issue with Joe Benitez. He laid him out. He was just behind, so I did that. Okay. I did a, a Darkness with Batman. I didn't even oh, do all yeah. of that. That was actually Mark's book, and I ended up doing a few pages uh, for that. Actually, mm -hmm. I think I drew half the book. So a few things, but not much Darkness, truthfully. Yeah, and see, that was like me. I did uh, I did the, the Superman Darkness crossover, um, and then I did a, fill, or, or a, a Darkness issue that kind of tied into the video game. Um, and then I think it's covered and I, I know I, I did darkness Wolverine crossover, mm -hmm. which is awesome and a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah for um, sure. But I don't know. I don't think I ever really actually like worked on the, the series. Even oh, you know what? I did it. One of my favorite characters. I did a tales of the darkness too. So there was, okay. that. it was like a medieval darkness or whatever. So yeah, there was that, but yeah, not much. Um, I was going to say something I forgot, but we have a super chat from Geek Fies for four dollars and ninety nine cents. Thank you very much. With a cool looking logo too, by the way. Uh, when is the live action coming out? Asking for a friend. <laughs> that might be the Geek Fies that I was talking about earlier, man. Maybe I didn't. I can't see the logo on one side, but is it a yellow? Yes, with yeah, sunglasses. With sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the video production company, buddy. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for the super chat. And uh, yeah, amazing, amazing work on the intro. Thanks for jumping in, guys. That's awesome. Yeah. We have all the best people watching. So you put these up like, so basically you, I'm not really familiar with how YouTube streaming works, man. I haven't really done it. So yep. This is live and then you, you it's just a, it turns into a regular video, right? Uh, well, it's it's always called a stream. So yeah, it goes up live and then it automatically posts um, just yeah, directly to my YouTube feed. So uh, this will be up really directly afterwards. Uh, I think, I don't even, I don't know if, the, you know what, I've never tried to watch right away. So I don't know, but pretty sure that it's right away. What, can I ask you like, what um, inspired you to jump on and start doing YouTube videos now? Um, Jimmy Reyes and Page One Comics. I did a, uh, a, a stream for, for Jimmy. He's an inker also. Well, he's an inker uh, and a penciler, and he's doing um, – and I always shout him out because I owe him a lot, and he's a good guy. But he's, he's got his book, Dragon Rage. Uh, and and uh, so, yeah, he had me on his channel. And I had a YouTube channel that I had done a couple of videos for, you know, six years before, and uh, nobody watched them because, you know, nobody yeah. knew they were there. But then over the years, I ended up with 11,000 subscribers, which is tough to get from nothing, yeah. you know? Really? And he said, you really should take advantage of that, you know? I think it'd be great. And I thought, with the pandemic happening, no conventions, uh, and I, I get a little depressed when I, I have no 
contact with with fans by the way we have lance Deboy here speaking of of people that i know from conventions that i never get to see anymore but i get to see here which you know it it means a lot so that's really why i wanted to start just to kind of keep that connection awesome man no i'm glad you did it because i i feel like um you know more people should jump on there especially if you're teaching techniques and stuff like that which is kind of what you started doing right like you well, yeah, you know what? This was my strategy. I figured, okay, if I have a YouTube channel and I just, you know, go on and talk about me, nobody's uh-huh. watching that. You know, like who cares? <laughs> but if I put something up that it has some value, hopefully, you know, it'll. And it seems like it's it's gone pretty well. And um, I mean, you know, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, by the way, um, uh, all you guys that are watching, I have a new tutorial that'll be coming out um, very very soon. I'm, I've worked on it today. Uh, I put a ton of work into this one. I'll just tell you what it is. It is um, drawing fight scenes. So, oh, and actually, it's a <laughs> great idea for a tutorial, considering that we have on Final Boss that is all about the coolest fight scenes uh, in awesome. comics. So, yeah, so that's coming up. Love I it, haven't man. done that. <laughs> What's that? I have to tune into that one. <laughs> yeah. So it should be fun. I, I put a lot of pre-work into that one. Sometimes I just go for it, and then other times I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I should do some planning so I'm not fumbling. How and my hard drive is full. I don't know. I, I, you know, actually, I don't know. Twenty mm-hmm. or thirty, or you know, oh. a decent amount anyway. You and you know, take... everyone. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, do you like to just take suggestions, or do you just come up with certain things that you think people might be interested in learning? Kind of kind of both, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, kind of both. And I, I have to say, I never know when um, one's going to do really well or one's not. Like, there's, I have no idea. Yeah. So I just <laughs> make them as good as I can. And I really wanted, wanted to try and avoid, because it's so easy to take the temptation of just saying, hey, if I do a, a video about drawing eyes, those seem to do really well for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, but I just don't think they have any real value, you know? So I just <laughs> figured I'll, I'll take it as it comes and try and just do the kind of stuff that I would want to yeah, want to see. That's awesome. So are you, um, are you in like close to Toronto or where are you at in, in Canada? I got asked to come out to the Calgary show, but I, I've never been there. Is that, is that pretty cool area? It's Calgary is beautiful. We've got some family there. Uh, it's it's great. If you ever go, I need to tell you what restaurant to go to. I would tell you right now, but again, I have no memory for anything. But yeah, we've got family that has a great restaurant, so I'll have to. And yeah, I would definitely recommend it. It's a great place. Um, I'm in Windsor, which is about four hours south of Toronto. So you know, it's. Uh, I, I heard Calgary is like the Texas of of of. Uh... Canada or something like it's it's kind of countryish a little bit. It really is cowboy hats the whole thing. It's very multicultural, wow, but I mean, so is Texas, man. you know. So yeah. it's yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know that. But yeah, it's you, a great place. Miss, like, did you have a good time when you were in LA, man? Did you, or was it just uh, like a all work and no play kind of thing? For you? Yeah, that probably it, at that time, huh? For the most part, it, but. It was, yeah. I mean, I, I I made a lot of great friends that, you know, I obviously still really value. And I mean, it was great in a lot of ways, but uh, I hated LA, yeah, really <laughs> a lot. It, it was it was really really tough for me. I uh, I'm in you know Windsor. It's it's two hundred thousand people. It's not tiny, but holy crap, you're beating me. I need to speed up. Oh, uh, I, I I didn't know what the time frame was on this one, honestly. I usually take about two hours. It doesn't matter. I figure worst comes to worst. Um, well, I have a background. There you go. Yeah, we'll figure something out. And uh, now that I've got this down, also you have the advantage. This is your character, so it's easier for you to draw. That's my excuse. <laughs> it's looking. I'm not so used cool, to. Man. What's that? That's looking awesome, man. I just I I just looked up oh. to see like how you've been doing it. Sick. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a very fun character to draw. Yeah, I was trying to uh, like figure out the color scheme. You know what I mean? I knew I wanted it to be obviously mainly black, um, but 
I, I was gonna go black and green, but just didn't. I didn't. It didn't work very well, man. <laughs> so red, red is always a good choice. I feel you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. I really like the the black um, pouches on the on the oh, stomach, yeah. and I haven't done them black yet, but they look very cool. And the reference that I'm looking at, which you guys mm -hmm. can't see, but um, it is nine o'clock, which means. We're going to put Eric on the spot again to see how this is coming along. So here we go. How's it coming, Eric? I'm way beyond y'all. <laughs> oh, hey, you are. Do, you like that, do you like that glove? Like, cause I, got, I got one of those recently that I use on my – when I'm drawing digitally, but I haven't, I haven't used it on paper. Does it, does it help prevent smudging and stuff? Oil may, mainly, uh, mainly can't speak. Okay. Um, Two edge doesn't smudge too much for me. It's just I get a lot of oil on the paper, and then I can't get any shadows or anything like that. Uh huh. So yeah, it helps pretty good. It's a this is a smudge smudge guard, which is yeah okay very nice brand. I'm gonna call it a geek sock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried one, dude? No, because it's uh, a geek sock. Ah, you know what? <laughs> I know a lot of people use them. Yeah. Now I'm going to hear all about it. <laughs> they, I've never used them with paper, but like I said, they they help like with your iPad or something when you're trying to yeah. glide across the, the, the uh, screen. Yeah, iPads have your hand glides across, and the biggest problem is the pen glides right across. But I, I, I was talking to Robert Marzullo. He's also got a YouTube channel, and uh, he uses like a um, – surface over it's it's like a bit of a textured clear surface oh, yeah. over a screen yep. so at some point i need to well i need to get an ipad and i keep meaning to get back to that well eric it's looking good and it is coming along so you know good job eric thank you <laughs> <laughs> eric is concentrating all right <laughs> thanks eric yeah i actually have that um one of those textured screens you were talking about on my iPad, it does help a lot. It kind of gives it more of a papery feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have not tried it, but I, I worked using the computer for a year, and uh, that was my biggest issue. Was I just couldn't get the subtlety that you can get on paper, just because it would just slip everywhere. So that's actually what I wanted to ask you about too. Was 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 your digital your digital time? You know what I mean? Like when you were doing. Because you were doing ish, full issues digitally, right? Yeah, I was for yeah a little bit there. Uh, and I was using a lot of 3D models. I was really kind of experimenting. I kind of think that it hurt me a lot. You know, It's always good to experiment, but I got really invested in using models. And um, if you use them too much, you start to uh, really lose a lot of your individuality, I guess. You know, it... it I think I really paid for it. And when I switched back to pencil, it took me a little bit to kind of get my groove back. Oh, really? So, you know, I would, I would work on the computer again. I think I would avoid um, really 3D. And yeah. I see people do it incredibly, like beautiful 3D backgrounds that really, really work. I just could never really, you know, for me, it, it ended up kind of hurting. So Did it, take it was a stage. Time, then it was worth it. You know what I mean? Like, was it, because that's always one thing I've wondered was is it, is it is it taking more of your time to get like the three D model and the different backgrounds in place and and rendering correctly than it than it would be yeah it, it, yeah for sure and you know my personality is to kind of obsess a little mm -hmm. so you know I'm looking for like the perfect perfect alleyway when I know in my head what I want to draw I don't know why I wouldn't just draw it but yeah <laughs> I went down a rabbit hole. What were you using? What can I ask? Like what programs? Because I've always been curious. Like what someone even searches or whatever. I was using Manga Studio. It's Clip Studio Paint now, but when I was using it, it was Manga Studio, um, and oh, I was okay. using a, a Cintiq, the big, you know, desk yeah. Cintiq. Yeah. I don't even have it anymore. It actually got so old that it stopped. Like it just wouldn't even work. So. <laughs> because I do remember, like you know, um, noticing your. You can kind of tell, like, obviously you can sometimes tell, like, the digital yeah. stuff, you know? But I, yeah. I, mean, I, drew, I drew the entire um, 
Final Boss book in on my iPad. But you know, you, I think you never made the mistake of of uh, going 3D heavy, which I did, and it looks like because looking at the the artwork, which again looks incredible. Um, all the the rendering and lines and and detail looks proportional, mm-hmm. which is a big problem for me. I would zoom right in, and things would, you know, I would have way too much detail in small areas and not enough detail in bigger areas, and just a lot of problems like that. So yeah, it was. Well, that is one of the hardest things to manage. I feel like when drawing digitally, because you have to fight that urge to to always be zooming in and getting, you know every little freaking detail on every background character that doesn't even really need to be there, but yeah, well, <laughs> and you do it. Actually, it would have been very interesting to have you uh, working on the computer just because it's something on this channel we haven't done at all. Uh, now, oh, man, yeah, I totally could have done that. That would have actually been really cool. Maybe we could have you on again sometime, you know, yeah, I'd be happy to like, you know, do something on the iPad because it's, 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 I don't do it. Like when I'm doing my, Marvel and DC covers and stuff because I, you know, I, I still want to have original art and stuff. And I told myself I'd never go full digital, but um, this was a project that I wanted to be able to do if I was traveling or if I want, you know what I mean? If I was out of town or, or at a convention that I could just bring my iPad and, and just pick away at it and work on it here and there yep. without um, having to have my whole setup, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this is my tools are all convention tools. Yeah, I was using um, uh, Croquill and a proper brush and the whole works. And I, I found I really like the convention tools, and it's totally portable. Portable, and because I'm uh, working on the couch, generally they just work much better. So, <laughs> what are you, are you, when you when you're wa- when you're working, are you like since you're on the couch, are you you like the TV on? Are you listening to stuff? Like, what do you typically do, man? Like, what's your background? I used to have a TV on when I worked all the time, and I would watch the news. And you know, that's that's not uh-huh. a good way to be in a good <laughs> state of mind. So I just leave that alone, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I, I watch a lot of UFC. I watch. Oh. I, I got into F one. So on, I watch Netflix too, right? And on Netflix, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's this F one show. All of I think it's Drive to Survive. Anyway, uh-huh. somebody recommended it. I watched it. Ooh. Now I'm a huge F1 fan. So really? anything that I can sit down and, you know, there are hours. Of, and because I'm sitting here working, I, I'm sure you run into the same thing. I've got hours to watch the whole undercard for UFC every week. Oh, yeah, you know. for sure. Man. That's, I always will have UFC on when I'm, when I'm working, too, because you can just – it's the only time you can listen to every, all the announcers talk about stuff. Yep. And stuff that you might want to rewind or fast forward, but you don't have to if you don't. If you're just working, <laughs> and then you can just yeah. look up. You can just look up when uh, there's, a, there's a knockout, or like you know, you hear him go, "Oh!" And then you, you can just occasionally look up. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. And you know, I, I have to admit, I'm such a good UFC fan that when they start wrestling too much, I'll watch some wrestling because some wrestling, you know, and it is it's a big part of the sport. But um, when it looks like one guy's just laying on top of the other guy, I just <laughs> fast forward. Yeah. Can, you know, because I don't watch live. I, I don't I, uh, Well, lately I've been painting with Eric actually every Saturday. So I, I, we never, you know, I, I don't watch live. I watch later on. Uh, this week, my son just spoiled the headline fight for last me. Last night? That was the last yeah. night. That's yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I know who won. And I'm not going to yeah. say it. Oh, man. Yeah. Do you never get on Instagram if you're in the middle of watching a fight? Oh yeah, really and I've spoiled so many things. Just, just by habit, just habit. Just pulling up Instagram, and then the first thing you see is like a UFC thing. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah. freaking a! I don't even need to watch the main event now. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I watched that one last night, man. Yeah, well, I'm still gonna watch it. You know, I'm not gonna skip it, but hey, at this well, point. Uh, Speaking of UFC, Dave, what do you think of the uh, the McGregor? Did you watch that live? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I don't know what to say about it. Like, you know what? I I hate to speak ill of anyone, and I really try to you know be positive here. Like, I have no bad thoughts about anything on this channel, uh, and I do. Obviously, we all do. But you know what? We're here to draw and 
I, I yeah. try to keep it that way. But I will say, yeah, some of the things that he said, uh, he, I'm sure, I think he lost some fans. <laughs> Do you think he'll be back? Man? Like, I think so. Yeah, the, the injury or whatever the foot injury. I I do th- think so. I don't know though, but I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I hope. I, I mean, I do feel like he adds a lot to the to the league. You know, just entertainment wise, I guess. But yeah, he, yeah, he does. I mean, it's a lot of drama, which you know yeah. brings in people. Uh, so, oh, we have a super chat for nine dollars ninety nine cents from Kevin Mandevil. Thank you so much, Kevin. And he says, Tyler has been known recently for some amazing variant cover work. I was wondering if he has a personal favorite variant that he's done. I just picked up his Moon Knight ASM 20, uh, 268 homage. Killed it. Awesome. Oh, a favorite, huh? Um, well, ooh, that's, that's a tough one, man. I mean, I always say, like, one of my – well, one of my favorites is the um, – that Deadpool back in black cover. I don't, I don't have it here, but it's it's the it kind of got me into starting to draw the Venom and Symbiote stuff. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's it's basically Deadpool's face with Venom Venom taking it over, and it's very like Mark Bagley inspired. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to go wrong with Mark Bagley. Yeah, especially like his, his Symbiote stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I'd have to think about that actually to have like a favorite. But so, what's the one that you hate the most? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I could definitely tell you a few of mine. Oh really? Yeah, my most hated cover of all time, and it was the first cover Marvel sent me uh, cover paper. I was I did a few covers just on regular paper. Anyway, they sent me cover paper, and so I did this uh, Phoenix cover for Ultimate X Men on it and to this day I, oh, every time I see it at a convention I die a little and I have not drawn a cover on that paper ever since yeah um, that their, it, their paper was really rough right it wasn't the paper it was but it doesn't matter mm-hmm. I'm blaming the paper <laughs> it, it was actually a little rough but yeah no really I just I'm very superstitious do you do you prefer smooth stuff then yeah yeah. And you know what? Uh, mm, I don't know. I, I kind of like rough paper. I worked on it for a little bit. The problem I had is the inkers that I've worked with really hate it. Uh, like Danny Mickey refused. I mean, well, yeah. you know, he did a couple of pages and then he said, look, this is taking me twice as long. I can't be, I can't work this way. And so I switched for, for Danny when we started working together. And I don't think I've ever used rough again. Oh man, yeah, I can't stand it. Even when I was getting free paper, you know, I was like, I'm just gonna buy my own. I just didn't want to deal with it, you know. Yeah, well, and I'm sure you've gone through this too. Like sometimes the paper quality is just not there. And uh, I, I, when I started working with Matt Banning, uh, Bat, um, mm-hmm. the co-creator of Ascension, we were working together at DC for a bit, and he had a lot of trouble with the paper, and so he recommended the stuff I'm using now. It's Strathmore. Actually, it looks like we're using the same paper. I'm using Strathmore 200 series. Um, um, it's just like the stuff you can buy at Hobby Lobby or something. That's what um, I'm well, I get it online, but it comes in a like a book. You just you know pull them out. Um, yeah, well, it's like a pad of money. Is it this stuff? Or yes, no? exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly yeah. it. And that paper, it's not expensive. It's cheaper paper, but it is great. Oh, yeah, this is the best, huh? Yeah, it really holds up. And I've never had an inker complaint with it, which is, you know, good. Yeah, because I've worked with Bat quite a bit, too, and I think that's I think he enjoyed working over that as well. Yeah. Yeah, and he does a nice enough job. I'm willing to, you know, if you have a specific paper, that's fine totally. with me. Absolutely, man. He's he's definitely one of the best I've ever worked with. Man. Yeah, actually, I've I've been talking to him a little bit lately about uh, doing something. You know, I, I haven't worked with an inker in quite a while. It's it's been a bit. So you know, it'd be nice to do something with him again. Yeah, I was gonna work with him on um, this. DC, uh, oh, it was called Gotham. No, it was called Arkham Knight. No, Arkham Knight. I think it was. It's part of the new. I don't even know if it's out. If it's still coming out, but I was like, I don't think I can ink this. I so I, you know, Bat was gonna do it, but I ended up um, 
not taking the book, man. Oh yeah. I don't know, man. Like I had like, I sat down to draw it and I, I feel like I had like an anxiety attack or something. I was like, I don't think I can do this. Like it was really weird, man. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, if that happens, you kind of got to go with it. Yeah, I got through like the first, I had like a few pages laid out. And then I had the first page about halfway done. And I just, I just was like, I don't think I can finish this. I don't, I don't, you know, I just knew that I wasn't going to enjoy myself for the next few months or something, man. You know? So I don't want to put you on the spot, but was it a, just the script being something kind of that you, wasn't what you're comfortable drawing, that kind of thing? No, not real. Well, I mean, it was very, very, um, there's a multiple characters and it was pretty, pretty detailed and a lot of stuff happening on each panel. And, um, but that wasn't really the problem. I mean, I've done that before, but I don't know, man. I was just like, it was, this was last year too. And I think I was, it was like during COVID. And I think I just had like a ton of anxiety just going on, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, and I just, um, basically crumbled under the pressure. I, I have no idea, man. I, I just remember calling my editor and, it was just like, uh, I'm sorry. Like, you know what I mean? If I was, it was terrible. But luckily I was early enough on the project. That it didn't, I, don't, I don't think it really affected anything too much, hopefully, but, um, yeah, I'd say that early on. That's, <clears throat> they should be, I'm sure they were fine. <laughs> I'm sure they were disappointed, but. And ever since I've had kids too, man, like I, it's been a, a lot harder for me to, um, to, to, sit down for 10 hours a day and, and, and know that there's going to be deadlines looming. And I don't know, man, it's, that's why I think I, I do more covers and stuff now, but, and the covers are kind of their own sort of stress though, because every image you do has to be totally. something that, you know, is going to sell a book. Like I, I find, so I've been doing a bunch of covers and I mean, I'm not really working monthly at all, but in some ways I feel more stressed than, I'm working yeah. monthly. <laughs> no, sometimes it's better to not have to think about all that. It's just like, hey, just yeah. here's the here's the script. Do this, and then you know what I mean. You you can kind of just almost like have like a, well, I did my job today. You know, you know what you needed to do. Yep. Um, Get the page done. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not like a nine to five, but you still can have like that. Okay, I did. I knew I needed to get that done. At, you know, today. As long as I do that again tomorrow in the next four, you know, three days, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the amount of times I've, I've been looking at over a week of two pages a day because I totally blew the schedule for whatever reason. I, I, I remember I was working on, uh, um, Avengers and Elder Scrolls came out oh, and man. I drew one of those issues, basically the entire issue, two pages a day. That's oh, rough. Yeah, no, that's that. I think that might have messed up multiple people again. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, and it messed up multiple people that I was working with. You know, the colorist and the inker, Danny, like, yeah. And that's something I have to admit, I really didn't think a lot about at the time. Like, when I blow it like that, uh, I'm forcing that deadline on them, too, you know? Yeah. Mm. That's something really easy to forget, you know? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And then the colors, you know, they get it the worst, man, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I've done a lot of work with Frank Diamato. I don't know if you've ever worked with him. One, I think once or twice, man, yeah. Like, I, I, I remember when he was doing your stuff. I, see, he did, a, he did one of my very first Top Cow images because he was good at – he did some stuff for Top Cow, and then he got the, the, got, the, got the gig at Marvel – Mm -hmm. And and then I was like ah because he did this like striker image. He oh yeah, did, yeah. He did he did the image that got me strike force. It's probably his colors, man, that got me the job because it was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He was yeah. the whole series, but um, he got I think he ended up getting you know, multiple gigs at Marvel, and he just didn't have time, man. So. Yeah, well, I I think it would have been around that time that we started working together. It was on uh, Ultimate X Men, and I loved his stuff. I had, I really put him in some uncomfortable spots a few times with deadlines, and uh, we're pretty close. So he was more than happy to tell me. <laughs> so I heard about it. <laughs> Are you working with him still on stuff? 
Uh, any stuff that I do for Marvel, he colors. So, mm-hmm. and lately it's just been, I haven't been able to do covers. So, um, they've been using a lot of the stream stuff and uh-huh. he colors that. And by the time he's finished with it, it's like a full cover. I mean, he does such a beautiful job. Ah, awesome. Yeah, no, he's definitely one of my favorites, man. Like he, that your whole, cause he did a lot of your, your special, edi- like your special event books, right? Like your ultimatum and or Denier, or what other books did he do of yours, man? Mm-hmm. He did, he did a few years, but. Um, he did Ultimate X-Men, he did uh, Avengers, Moon Knight, like, yeah, a bunch yeah, of stuff. Man. Comic artist Pro Secret says uh, the chat should demand that he remove the hair from the tip of his brush pen. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. How, yeah, how you know what? You, What's how that? that? How do you deal with that? Or is it just add an extra little, like, nice little render line, man? And for the most part, they kind of don't touch. <laughs> I know. Oh. Like, it's, it drives me crazy, too. But I don't have a thing to cut them off right now. <laughs> yeah, I think if you're OCD, this this stream is going to kill you. <laughs> Watching my brush. As long as it's not affecting you, it doesn't really matter, huh? Yeah, Russick says he's clipped them with scissors before. I did actually. Yeah, I had people saying, "What is going on with that?" But I don't have scissors right now, so yeah. I just need to get a new brush. This one's finished. Is it a? Uh, is it just? Yeah, I mean, those are just like uh, replaceable, right? Or is it a, a refillable cartridge one that you want to keep the pen? If, as long yeah, as the can. refillable. And for whatever reason, they twist the wrong way. They twist this way. But yeah, yeah and you just pull this out and put another one in. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. So how many hours do you think you put in? Uh, was it Skyrim or was it like Oblivion that you were playing? Um, do you remember? It was I the older you- one. So I, I want to say... Oblivion. I think I was a little older. There was like I think there was like Morrowind. Like, there was a, there was a couple. Like I, I got into the series with Oblivion though. Uh, you know what? It might have been Morrowind. I think that's a little bit older. Okay. So <laughs> great games, man. Yeah. By the way, comic book uh, artist Pro Secrets is is Ethan. So hi, Ethan. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, he was actually the one that was like, "Hey, you should do you should do Dave's." Um, show and i you know i've been watching it anyways and i was like i don't know if he'll let me come on there but it actually turned out pretty good man i'm glad you oh yeah well, i was i was thrilled about the idea of doing it you know um and i kind of worry i have to admit uh because i do all these streams like you know my monday night draw streams and there's a point where people are going to be like oh, really dave drawing another picture don't care anymore. Yeah. So I mean, there's like a you know. Eventually, people have seen it. So I thought, you know, having uh, having a great artist on to come and and draw this, I thought would be great. Comic artist Pro Secrets, Ethan says, 434 viewers, and some of you haven't backed Final Boss. Can you support Tyler's campaign, uh, comic campaign tonight? Well, yeah. Thank you so much, and absolutely, yeah. Please, please uh, give Tyler your support, and thank you, Ethan, for that. Right on, you guys. Appreciate it. Um, no, I because you, you did the the I watched part of the one with Ariel that you had on, and and it's kind of a similar format, right? Do you think you'll have more um, just just friends, like basically artist friends, on to, to do stuff? You know, it's I don't know why it never occurred to me. <laughs> um, I, we I had some people on the Monday Night Draw, and because of just the format of the show, it was a little it wasn't the easiest. Um, but since I'm doing this kind of a stream also, it makes it, yeah, really easy to do this kind of thing. And, um, so yeah, I definitely would like to do it again. Um, uh, and, and actually uh, he has not, Wow. but yeah, uh, I've been bugging him to do it. So, you know, I'll break him down at some point and he'll do it. Um, I, I talked to, an incredible fantasy. I don't want to just say because I want to be able to like, you know, oh, announce it, but I, there's a really great fantasy painter that uh, has agreed to come on. Actually, I'm going to do uh, a show for him and in return, he's going to do mine. So, you know, I'm willing to, you know, I would have been happy to do that show anyway, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a great trade. We have a I super chat from Eve one for $2 who says, who would you like to have do covers for final boss? Oh man, there's so many people that I would love. In fact, I, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of covers that I haven't been able to show off 
um, well that I that I'm whole, I'm saving for our future issues, but I've got uh, I've got covers from so far. I'll just name the ones that that I can remember off the top of my head. Obviously, I have the the Ryan Otley um, cover, Boss Logic, Brett Booth. Um, I've got Jimbo, the, art, the artist Jimbo. He's so these are the ones that I'm using for issue one. Mm-hmm. And then I've got a cover from Kenneth Rockefort. Oh yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um, well, got, so are the other ones. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I've got one from Paolo Pentelena. Oh nice. Um, uh, I don't know if I got that. I got that. Ali Garza. Awesome. Uh, I've got two from Brian Ching, which are so sick, and I can't wait to show those. Yeah, you know he's doing really amazing painted stuff. So different than what I'm used to. You know, he's a very versatile. Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. I'm thinking. Um, I'm totally thinking of somebody else. Brian Ching. He's he's a top cow artist. He did yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah, for ages. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, Brian. Mm-hmm. Brad's got art as a super chat for twenty dollars. He says, "Looking great as always, Dave." Did I hear Tyler say he did all the final boss digitally? I can't wait for that book too. It looks great, Tyler. Yeah, I did, man. I, I um, on my iPad Procreate program, <laughs> except for the cover, the the main the cover I did traditionally and then enhanced it like digitally, but. Yeah, well, this is a reality of the business. Uh, something that really makes me think twice about digital for a lot of stuff. And I, I'm not against it. Like, I, I could imagine in the future doing more digitally again. But, uh, you know, original art, it's part of how uh-huh. we keep the lights on. So, yeah, tough to give exactly. that up. So, uh, yeah, for sure. That's why I was like, well, if I, the only time I ever do um, digital cover like for Marvel or DC or other publishers if I if it's just like a deadline thing and I'm just like okay crap this thing is this thing is like dude you know tonight and I can fill in all the blacks digitally and I can you know what I mean yeah. use a couple of different brushes but um there's been lots of times where I've actually gone back though and and um <laughs> drawn the traditional version basically um just because I'm like, well, gosh, I don't, this is a you know Star Wars cover or something. I want to have this thing, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know when when fans get to know your work and, and respond well to it, uh, original art can be it can be pretty lucrative. It's definitely worth uh, having it. I, there yeah, are artists. It's a good market sometimes, you know. Like it's a cool thing yeah. to collect too. Like. It is. Yeah, I, I've actually I've got a lot. And there are some artists that that do everything digitally that I just I, I don't I understand digitally sure but you know do some things traditional because their work is incredible and they're incredibly popular and you know it's uh, I don't know sometimes I feel like it, it it's uh, it's greedy to want to just have original art to sell but um, first of all I like working on paper but second of all. Uh, yeah, it, you know, we need the money, man. It's a job. <laughs> so well, yeah, we have Nick Brucci here. Great to see you, Nick. Thank you so much for coming hey, by. Don't worry, man. And he has a fifty dollars super chat, and thank you yeah. so much for that. Two of my favorite guys, Dave Rocks. Tyler has an awesome Indiegogo campaign. I backed it today. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, right. Hopefully, everyone else can. Wishing you guys both my best, and everyone hit thumbs up for David. Well, thank you so much, Nick. I'm sure all you guys know, but for those of you who don't, Nick is the publisher and owner and, you know, uh, boss of Dynamite Entertainment. And uh, actually, we we did an Indiegogo campaign. I did a uh, Red Sony cover, and I just, a couple weeks ago, managed to get all of the, I did a bunch of sketches for it. So they're done, and oh, I sweet. would figure they're probably out by now. But yeah, yeah, it was a great experience. So thank you so much, Nick, really. And thanks for coming by. Yeah, I'm... First of all, Nick's the final boss of Dynamite, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing one, too, uh, with those guys. Actually, I got a Van Prella one that I – it's done already. I just we, – we haven't um, released it yet. I got to I gotta get some of my video, like, footage and, and behind-the-scenes stuff, like what you're talking about, right? Yeah, I think that's yeah. stuff really – it makes a difference, for sure. So are you thinking about having the, the same guys that did the, the final boss video do something for it? <sighs> Oh, that would be actually a really good idea. <laughs> Probably now I will do that. Um, yeah. Because it just looks a lot better than what I could do. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, 
it was incredible. Cool, man. Thanks, dude. But I actually, um, so we were talking about covers. Like, um, I'm Sylvester's doing one too for me, man. And I'm like, wow. Well, it's really just a sketch. All I asked for was a sketch, but you know, I, whatever it's, it is, it's going to be amazing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's capable of doing a, a sketch. That's not incredible. So, you know, that's amazing. That's a big artist to get. And he doesn't do a lot of stuff like that at all. So I know, man. So I'm like, Oh, Holy crap. You know, but, um, I know he's, you know, he's pretty busy and stuff. So I'm like, Oh, I'll wait until you, you, you can do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> Even if it's for issue 10 or something. Yeah. I've got a couple artists, uh, on my list that, that owe me one of these days. So one of these days I'll be able to do this and, you know, and get my, yeah. uh, my cover back. I'm one now. So if you ever, if you ever, like I said, if you ever want anything or need anything, I'm always happy to do that. Dude, be oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. I would absolutely love to have you do something. My idea for a comic right now though, is maybe the dumbest comic idea of all time. <laughs> so it's, it's a character called blight with two Y's, and when you write it it looks so stupid it was supposed to be blight with you know, like properly spelled right but unfortunately uh it's already a marvel character so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and there's no story like it's such an image comic i've got no idea i don't know who the character is nothing but i have drawn him and he's got a name so Vincent Allen has, or sorry, Vincent, Vincent Aiken has a $5 super chat. And he says, uh, can I Tyler use what you're doing tonight as a cover, uh, Dave? Uh, can Tyler use what you're doing tonight as a cover, Dave? I, I think Tyler, you were talking about using it as like a, maybe an incentive or. Yeah. Uh, uh, Vince, what's up, man? Um, I, yeah, we're going to basically, I'm going to, I want to make some sort of mini print or special, you know, edition print or something that, um, that everyone can get like if they back the book um, and I'll, I'll make some sort of update or announcement or something. And, and um, maybe a stretch goal, just something. But I, I mean, I asked Dave before we went on, cause I was like, dude, I gotta be able to use this for something. Cause it's, it's I know it's going to be amazing, but um, and, and I asked him if I could and stuff. So yeah, we, I'm definitely going to do something with it for sure. Um, probably some sort of stretch goal or just, uh, you know, put it in everyone's um, everyone's order as mm -hmm. just like an incentive, you know, for backing the book and and for watching this, really, you know. Yeah. So, uh, what pen are you using now? So this is that uh, the Faber Castell brand. Okay. You use it's probably similar to what like the Microns and stuff, right? I think. Yeah, I've uh, well, I've got some, but they they're long dead. So. Yeah. Uh, at, at some point, I. I know when I'll end up using them again, it'll, it'll be at a convention and those will be what they have. And next thing you know, um, I'll, I'll like it and that'll be my pen for years. You know, what, you what, got, I was, what are you using right now? I didn't see. Uh, I'm what still using the same brush. Okay. So and you're still so, blocks and stuff right now. Yeah. I'm just getting the bottom done. Once that's done, I'll get into the, uh, the Tombow. And then, you know, I was finished with detail with these ones. So it's like a kind of a three-step process. So we have a super chat. From Volt 14 for 200 rubles, I think. Uh, David, and thank you, by the way, very much. David, can you talk about drawing Batman and proposing to Catwoman in Batman 24? It was a big moment for you. Very iconic image you did there. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. Um, okay. Truthfully, I had already left Batman when that one came up, and uh, they asked if I would, I would do it. And uh, I said sure um so i only had time to do half the issue i did half and i had no idea that i don't know they i just thought that you know they just needed me to to do it because it would be i don't know anyway i read this that looks absolutely incredible tyler i oh thanks man i'm getting my butt kicked right now no oh, <laughs> that's it you can't come back i'm sorry I'm actually picturing like uh um didn't you do a, a an aphrodite like it cover that I, I was like trying to picture one of your Aphrodite covers when I was doing this layout actually. Uh, you know, actually Mark Silvestri did one that's, that's very, so I think, you, yeah, there's a, I have, yeah, there's a Mark Silvestri one that's, that reminds me, I mean, it's not the same, but 
certainly with that blast, you know, with the gun. Yeah, Look yeah, at that yeah, yeah. Went, yeah. Yeah. That's probably well, what it was when I was visualizing then. Yeah. Yeah. That looks amazing. I can't believe how far. Uh, I'm pretty quick. You know, I'm not that slow, but I'm looking pretty slow right now. I got to get but, ready for uh, the conventions. You know what I mean? I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, the, the Batman, um, I didn't realize until it was done and they did some promotion for it and people started talking about it, that it was such a big deal. I have to admit, I just, yeah. Um, I don't really follow comic news. Um, I look, I love comics, but I love the art truthfully. That's, that's really kind of where I'm coming from. And so, yeah, I, sometimes things like that can kind of be a little lost on me. So it was a shock. I was, I was glad, you know, um, they ultimately didn't get married. So, you know, there's that, but uh, yeah. So it is 936 and we're going to um, jump on and see how Eric's coming along here with his. And uh, here we go. I think I hit, oh, no, he's there, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gone. I thought I went on to your thing and you were like, you know, off having coffee. No, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's looking great and it's really coming along i'm like i'm working way too slow you guys are both beating you right now hold on. i'm in the wrong screen i want to see it i don't want to okay hold on oh wow look at that man heck yeah, yeah. it's a cool. big difference from last time <laughs> <laughs> scrambling cool. so how are you enjoying drawing them uh pretty sure but it's fun yeah yep yeah he's uh yeah, nice, nice and bulky. I dig it. Yeah, I um, I was really torn. I, I wanted to draw, I wanted to draw that one. There were a couple that I wanted to draw, um, but Eric managed to to snag that one. So yeah, I think this one's yeah. This guy's right up your alley as well, Dave. That would look great for sure. You know what? Well. Every character is is like my kind of my kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Did you read the bio then of of Chain Pain as well? Yes, I think we, we both did, right? I mean, I know I did. Yes. Yeah, he uh, he's a bit sadistic. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a bit of a, a, a sick one, man. But because um, I really wanted to go with like that leather and lace kind of leather and chain look, you know. Yeah. But have a reason why that he was into that, I guess. Um, because he's part of this like mask league, which is kind of where Tommy, my main character, starts. That's why Tommy actually has that mask and he just kind of keeps it, you know, but, um, I wanted him to have like a, yeah, almost like a, a leather, like <laughs> ball and ball gag, like gag type of look, you know, like lit with chains and kind of a whips and chains kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yep. But you can't see it above his back. He's got like a lot of scars and stuff from just kind of, um, rough childhood. Exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah, he's not a goth whips and chains kind of guy. He's like a you know, real deal whips yeah, and chains kind of guy. Torture, you know, pleasure and torture whips and chains. Awesome. Well, it's, it's looking good. <laughs> what are you thinking? Half an hour? You think you'll be done? Uh, yeah, as done as I can be for sure. Okay. Yeah, me too. I know. I'm scrambling here too. Tyler's killing us. All right. <laughs> Thanks, sure. Looking good, Tyler. <laughs> Thanks, man. So how did you guys meet, Dave? Uh, you two. Uh, uh, I think actually, Eric, we we met the the first time uh, at a convention. Oh, yeah. But um, Eric started doing uh, moderating for the the chat and then helping with the website and uh, you know a bunch of stuff. And so we started um, uh, working together. Uh, I was helping with some storytelling stuff you had. And anyway, so, yeah, uh, we just enjoy working together. So we've been painting and, you know, uh, and also he's he's great for the stream, too. Um, hopefully he enjoys it. I think he enjoys it. But, yeah, he's, he's a great co-host to have. So, which is, it's a shame that we can't uh, get him on here uh, right now. But I think at some point we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, because I'm sure there's a way, right? There's got to be a way. There's got to be, yeah. If not StreamYard, because that's what we're using right now. All right, done with the brush. Nice. So now what do you go to, man? Now I've got the, you know, the, the Tombow oh, yeah. Yeah. Furunosuke. Cool. 
when these are new, you can almost finish a picture with them. You know, oh, they, they yeah. get really good detail, but for sure. Like they're really stiff. Um, I like to take a fresh one to a convention because you can do a lot of your stuff that you need to do with just that one. Yeah. And so, Yeah, it's like anything. Every once in a while, I've opened up a new one, and it's just not been good right from the, the start. But generally, they're they're pretty reliable. Mm -hmm. So, hey, do you, I wanted to ask you, um, did you have a favorite UFC fighter? I, sorry, I wanted to ask you when we were talking about that. but um, Yeah, Tony Ferguson, I know. Nice. But, oh, dude, I love him, man. He's in my top five for sure. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, I mean, look, nobody, nobody lasts forever. And I, uh, I think it, it might be there, but I'm still pulling for him and hopefully he'll, he'll kind of figure it out. I know he had some coaching issues and, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Cause I really, I always wanted to see him fight Khabib. I mean, it's not going to happen now, but um, no. I, he was always my guy. I was like, ah, if he could, I think Tony could be the guy to take him, you know, but it's, yeah, sadly, not gonna. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I saw. I think Makachev said that uh, that Khabib might fight him. I don't know if he's just saying that, but. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably just saying that. Yeah, probably, man. I uh, I've always liked um, Carlos Condit. Oh yeah, he's yeah. One, one of my favorites to, to watch. You know, him. It's basically the strikers, you know what I mean? Like like Ferguson, like Max Holloway. Um, yeah, who his last fight was unbelievable, Max Holloway. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like the strikers. Nobody likes like Oliveira. I like Oliveira a lot. Like he just seems like a, a good kind of guy, and I like him. Nah, not my favorite way of you know fighting. So yeah, yeah. No matter but, how I mean, good they are, he's scary though, man. Because like I think you know, yeah. I mean, I feel like he's always gonna. He's just so good, so. Um, yeah, well, and he beat uh, uh, Chandler on the feet, so. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I forgot to draw this little knife here. Hey, look at that. I remember the knife. knife. Your character. <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> well, that's another, another cool thing about trying to, you know, do your own, like, do your own book is, is trying to come up with just different whether it's weapons or looks or costumes or, you know, yep. Backstories and stuff. It's just kind of, and I find it's, it's really, it's, I've done it before where instead of a, an interest in costume design, I just put so much detail on. It's just like every little thing that I could possibly think of, but there's no real overall kind of uh, design to it. And that is the toughest, toughest thing. Honestly, and it's, <laughs> well, this character, I feel like you could you could reduce this down to an animation style, and it would read, yeah. you know, and that's that's always the goal, right? Well, like you said, cosplayable. Yeah, I'm actually I'm uh, making or I hired a guy that's making um, 16 bit versions of the characters. Oh, and nice! I, I want to make stickers of them, you know, and and. It's because it's kind of gamer themed, and there's a lot of yep. different things like that. I wanted to, um, I wanted to have something that was in that realm, and and then one of the, one of the guys that's doing a cover, um, is is doing like a full on like eight bit or sixteen bit kind of style. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it should be very cool. Well, I'll tell you what, you should have a live stream because you are so fast, I can't keep up. <laughs> But that's the thing, man. I'm like, I'm like, if I had some co-hosts or something like that, I'd probably do it. But um, I just, uh, yeah, I'm. I really need to do some re like, like do some research on topics and stuff. You know what I mean? Beforehand. Yeah. Any sort of stream like that, but. What I'm do now? What, what did you you put some rubble and stuff in there, right? Yeah, that's kind of what it's I like, do for that It's my default. No, no, it's, it's the best default. Yeah, well, you know, it, I, as much as I would love to do the city behind there with cars and you know uh -huh. people at kiosks, yeah, that's. Oh man. 
I think I'm going to have her, yeah, just like a rubble flying around or some, maybe some glass. Let's see what I want to do. And then uh, rubble and smoke. Tim Jerry has a super chat for $2. Thank you very much, Tim. And he says, Tyler, what are your favorite fighting games? Uh, obviously, Street Fighter 2 is, is, is up there um, just because that was like prime when I was, you know, getting into video games and in like arcades and stuff. That was that was the game to play. Yeah, yeah but, to give you an idea of how old we are, arcades. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And man, arcades are the best, dude. I, I miss just going in and, yeah. and you know, waiting. Basically, the, the new the fighting games were the thing to play, though. You know, you had like obviously Street Fighter, you had Tekken, uh, you know, then Mortal Kombat came around. And, um, yep. Virtual Fighter, you remember that? Oh, yeah, Virtual Fighter, man. Like, and then, you know, Killer Instinct was, was awesome. Yeah. With the combos and everything, um, and then I got into games like Soul Calibur, which to me is still one of the best fighting games. Yeah, on the the Dreamcast. Yeah, and then I, there's newer ones and stuff too, but um, that was the character. The characters in that game, the designs and stuff, were so amazing. And then you could actually choose. I liked when games started to let you choose the costumes. Remember that, mm-hmm. like the different versions. Yeah, so it's you have like the light and dark version, you know. Yeah. yeah. So are um, you any good at those games? Not really, man. I mean, I. Well, I don't know. I mean. So okay, I, 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 yeah, I don't mean I, like I, international competitive, but you know. I mean, I could probably still beat most of my friends at like Street Fighter or something, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I see, really I couldn't. Remember some of the special moves. And I can't, I'm, yeah, I'm no good at it. I love the games. Uh, to be honest, I haven't played a fighting game in a long time just because I'm so bad at them. So I just kind of stay away nowadays. Like so I, I remember. Them. Go ahead, man. I remember all the ones from, you know, years ago. And I actually kind of, I went into a bit of a resurgence with, with those sorts of games. I've got three boys. And when they were younger, uh, we got the Injustice game, um, a few of those things, and I could beat them because they were young. So I was having <laughs> a good time again. But then they got older, and, you know, <laughs> that was it. And now they probably couldn't be home, and they're like, because kids are so good at games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're. Yeah. So actually, that kind of leads me to a, a question. Somebody asked about a live action movie, but I mean, this just seems ripe for a game. Oh yeah, yeah, I was picturing like a game or even um, I don't know, like a, a, some sort of anime or like you know, animated type of thing would obviously be amazing. But um, yeah, I think the first thing I was picturing was a game, almost like a Streets of Rage game or Double mm-hmm. Dragon. You remember Double Dragon? Oh yeah, this kind of side scroller. Yeah, that's more of like along the lines of maybe what I was picturing, and then you would get to you would get to the bosses, and then you'd have like a, like a nice boss. Uh, uh, fight scene, you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I like those games kind of a little more. I'm a little better at those. I remember the ni- the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game from the late yeah. 80s. That was so mm-hmm. good. Aaron yeah, Adams right. has a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Aaron. He says, awesome work, guys. Tyler, what Procreate pens do you like for digital inking? Thanks for taking the time to draw with us. Uh, let's see. What are my What is my favorite? pen that I, I use the inking br- pens or brushes most of the time and it's oh, what is it called uh, I have to go get it man but one one set that I would recommend you download like rather you can get it I don't I can't it's not that expensive I think it was like nine bucks or something but it's called the the crusty chisel or God, what is it? it's a very like textured Brush pen. Um, I want to say it's the, the no, 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 the crusty nib or something like that. <laughs> the chiseled nib or I, some something in that. I'd have to, I'd have to look. I don't have my iPad on me right here, but I I just use a lot of the the um, pen or the ink the ink brushes. I don't really use the pencil ones very much unless I'm just sketching in there. But um, I use the studio pen a lot. Which is one of the main ones, I think, because you can get some really good, like thick to thin, 
uh, you know, variations and stuff. And then is that one straight out of the box or is that a download? Yeah, that, that's one. Yep, that's one of the standard pens. And then um, there is a there is a uh, one of the pens or one of the brushes in the ink pack or in the ink category that I use for almost all my main like hatching lines and all that stuff. But I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there's, uh, it's got a, a bit of a frayed edge on it, which I like cause it looks a little bit more like natural. It's not so yeah. slick and smooth. Yeah. It's that was a, a real problem for me. Yeah. Did you like that stuff too when you were inking? Um, <sighs> I I tried a few downloads. I, I never really found something that I was I was that comfortable with. And now it wasn't that long ago, but I think there's more stuff out there now. Yeah, that's how it always is. With so many different brush pens and just. In fact, I have a really cool one that it's. It almost simulates a a dry brush. You know what I mean? Like the dry, like where you just, like you you get a nice dry brush look and. Um, almost like a as if you're rendering multiple lines at one time you know what i mean like 10 yeah, lines yeah, at a time but it's like a, it's just kind of like dry looking it looks really awesome <laughs> i love that look but trying to do that traditionally is oh man yeah like getting a brush to that point it's like a knife's edge where it's it gives you what you want yeah yeah it's too hard that's why i've never been able to do that look you know traditionally in fact, I feel like my digital style is a little bit different than what I can do. <laughs> so where do you feel more comfortable now? Um, I don't know, man. I, I Obviously, if you're trying to do um, those textured brushes and stuff, definitely digital because there's just sure. so many cool – I wouldn't call them shortcuts, but just textures that, that are very hard to achieve, like you said, traditionally. Yeah. Well, if I want to do like a lot of cool, like just cross hatchy lines and just a lot of line work, then, then definitely like uh, pen and ink, traditional style, convention style pens, like you're saying, you know, that's the move for that stuff. I, I can't really do a lot of cool line work. I don't feel um, on the iPad, you know? Yeah, that's that's really the big Achilles heel for me is I'm so reliant on lines. It's my whole style and, uh, it, they're hard to do you know I, I think there are ways to make it easier but it's tough do you um when you're drawing stuff, man do you typically know you want to visualize the shadows like the big shadowy areas because i know you do a lot of shadows and stuff do you is that like your first decision like okay i'm gonna have this whole leg or this whole like this side of the face like uh, you know I mean? No, it's it's really it's totally a secondary decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, like, I, first I and I use like a thin pen, um, and just get kind of get the cartoon in. And so there are so many times when I draw a ton of detail and then just completely black it out. And you know, I mean, and I do that too, where it's a mistake, and I'm like, okay, it's the easiest way to fix it. <laughs> but then there are just times where uh, just compositionally I want to do it that way, and it yeah it breaks my heart. But I always end up drawing all that stuff and then losing it and uh yeah once i've got kind of the drawing in then then i just put in shadows and i find for me it's really difficult for me to think of shadow across a whole figure so it, when it's the hardest i go in for line weights first um so i'm not even thinking of broad shadow shapes so i figure okay i've got my light coming from the here which i do for this one and so i'll just start to put thicker lines you know like this is curving away from the light so that'll be a little thicker down here will be thicker here yeah. anyway right and so i just go over the whole picture doing that and that kind of gives me it gets me far enough that i can start to put shadow in and then there are other times i just block it in and it feels comfortable it, and i'm sure you know what this is like there are days where it just feels like you don't know what you're doing like it nothing yeah, works like if I haven't drawn, if I go on vacation or something like that, I, I'm always like scared to start drawing again. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm nervous about it or something for some reason. Like, like I'm like as if I forgot. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of a weird. But I feel like you yeah. typically will kind of start getting into the groove again and remembering your basics and stuff. 
fundamentals and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and well, I remember, you know, I mean, we both worked for Mark Silvestri, and uh, one of the things he said to us early on, because I can't remember who asked him, but basically the question was, uh, what do you do when a page just totally doesn't work out? Like, you know, you, like you have a bad day. And he said, well, you get to a point where you're not every page is going to be your best, but, you know, you, you have enough professional tools. Like, you, you know what you're doing enough that you can at least, it'll be a professional job. It just won't be great, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> and so I, I kind of keep that in the back of my mind when a page is really not working and I'm just really like, they can't all be the best. Uh-huh. Just have to let well, it go. You have to, you have to think that way too. Like when you're, especially when you're doing um, interiors and, and you know deadline stuff, man. Deadline work. Yeah. Because sometimes that's really the only way you're gonna get through it, man. Is you can't always be 100. You know? Yeah, and then there are the times when you know you're on a total deadline, you have no time to think, and it's like one of the cooler things that, or at least you know maybe people won't like it but one of the cooler things that i think i've done but the problem is that you know it's such a high wire act it's not repeatable you just got lucky yeah well <laughs> what was cool man was i remember one of the issues that i did of strike force was one of those times where i was like okay you know the first three issues or whatever first four issues i had a lot of time so i was i was just doing as much as i could and then I, you know, I ended up picking up to me, and and then um, I kind of had a rush a little bit. But Mark actually noticed something about the issue that he actually liked more than the other stuff. And he's like, "What did you do different on this?" And I was like, "Well, I didn't have any time." <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> "He's like, I actually really, he's like, this looks way more organic or something." Yeah. Um, and I was like, "Oh, okay, so maybe because I, you know, for bas basically, I didn't have a." as much time to fill in all the stuff that wasn't necessary, you know? It, yeah. And it's so hard to let that stuff go, but yes, <laughs> but sometimes you're forced to, and, but you know, yep. sometimes it will make it to where, Oh, there's actually a little bit more open space here. You didn't really need that. Or you filled in you know, some shadow here that maybe you would have tried to cross hatch or render or whatever. And it, and it just made it a little bit more appealing and easy to look at. Yeah. And, all the stuff that I was throwing in there because I was trying to impress everyone. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I still haven't gotten over that. I still just, I, I've gone through periods where I don't put as much detail in and I think it's probably some of my better work, but it's so hard for me to pull back every time I, I try next thing, you know, it's just my tendency and I know it's insecurity. You know, I'm just always worried that the picture isn't good enough. And so if I put enough stuff on it, and, uh, you know, there's truth to that, really. People like detail, so you yeah, can get yeah. away with a, some bad art. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm definitely one of those guys that loves, like, looking at, at just at just line work, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I still love Bernie Wrightson, and uh, I just saw, I don't know, I, I'm guessing you probably saw this, but Jim Lee's been doing his i think it was 50 sketches or however many it was a ton of sketches for uh comic retailers yeah. and he put them all out on instagram at once you know when he was finished and uh some of the ink work that he did on those i, I just crazy you know mm -hmm. i love when he actually does his own inks and stuff yeah i love scott williams on him but uh you know at his best when he's inking his own stuff and being inventive <laughs> it's it's uh really pretty amazing what he can do well, that's another thing with Mark, too, is like, you know, I would love Weems and Bat on him, but I really, really enjoy seeing the stuff that he's doing now. Yep. Because I feel like that's actually what his art should look like. Or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I'm i still a huge, actually, I got in trouble with him. I don't know, in trouble, but he was not thrilled. I remember telling him my favorite stuff of his was, was, uh, his Wolverine stuff that he did with Dan Green. And I loved what Dan Green did on his stuff. Oh, yeah. and he, <laughs> you know, Dan was, he's much more of a gestural kind of a, um, a painterly inker almost, you know? Well, he's a brush inker and it's a looser style. And uh, I, I think Mark was, he was really going for more of the, you know, the modern style at the time. And yeah, yeah. I didn't, <laughs> you know what? It's, it's so easy to, I, there have been a few artists that I really respect 
that I've, I know I said the wrong thing to, you know, <laughs> by mistake. I'm like, oh, you can't take that back now. I think they're just taking it back because, you know, they're, I, I, maybe they just assume that, that because they didn't like it, that maybe other people didn't or something. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know I'm like that. You know, there are things that I can't stand, and I figure, okay, if you like it, it's because you know you're dumb. <laughs> 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 Not really. I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a, a chat from Art Nine, and I it, I looked up, and it was gone. So I'm sorry, Art Nine. What happens when you miss something like that? Can you? Um, oh wait, I see it. I remember. Oh yeah, there it is. From, uh, yeah, there we go. Can you see it still? Yeah. Yep, I see. It. Yeah, it's yeah. I remember Tyler Kirkham from the time from you know the Top Cow Times. Nice work he's, he has done back then. Yeah, he's been doing beautiful work for uh, a long time now. I mean, time flies. Did you did you after you stopped working at Top Cow? Did you visit sometimes? Yeah, like if you were in L.A. or something, would you pop in? I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time for sure. There was probably a good six years where I went. You know, every time Renee Gear uh, Gearlings was still there, yeah. there were there were a lot of people that I knew, a lot of the artists I knew, and so I would always come in. And then, uh, yeah. uh, they kind of stopped having a studio, <laughs> and when that happened, mm -hmm. you know, there was really nobody there that I knew anymore. There was Mark, but you know, he was not always in. And um, I, I have to be honest with you, uh, I was always so afraid of Mark that I never really got that close to him when we were, when I was there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> truthfully. So, you know, it's not like I would just pop in and, Hey Mark, buddy, how's it going? Let's go have lunch, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, I kind of know what you mean. I'm like, it's intimidating or something. And I mean, he's the nicest guy. I don't want to yeah, give everybody exactly. the wrong. Look at those rocks. Exactly. You know what? I quit. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> oh yeah. You done then? No, but. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. Oh, are you talking about me? My piece? Yeah. Look at oh, that. That's funny. I'm trying to I'm trying to pull out my 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 finchness in here, in a way. <laughs> you do like the best rubble and everything too. So. Uh, well, not today. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that is amazing looking. I'm gonna I'm gonna. This is gonna be right here. This is gonna be a hopefully a finch. Little you know little crevice here. You know, I got all that stuff from Travis Trest. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, all man. those wildcats. So good, dude. Yeah. This stuff is amazing. He's doing new stuff, right? He's doing... He is. I think it's just not stuff. enough. I, yeah, every once in a while I'll see a cover, and I mean, you know, I love to see it, but I just wish he would do more. Yeah, me too. I, look, he's got to live his life. It's none of my business, but, you know, it'd be nice to see more work. <laughs> Wait, why is he drawing more for us? Yeah. Don't doesn't he know we come first? <laughs> there's a lot of artists like that. I was like, gosh, why aren't you drawing anymore? Uh, sometimes I do feel like though, you know, when you're that talented, um, and you do stuff that's that special, you kind of do owe it to people to, and you owe it to yourself to do more. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like such a shame that there's just not, you know. A, just like to see more. Because well, artists know, like that don't come around. Yeah. Sorry? No, just you know, they might be drawing, but just behind the scenes, like doing, you know, video games or something. And we just, you know, us comic fans don't get to see it. But Yeah. Have you ever done any video game design, that kind of work? Just a little bit. Just, just paid for hire kind of stuff, you know, just um, nothing, nothing major, honestly. No. Yeah. Just dabbled here and there. And yeah. I think it was, I think it was, um, oh, dude, that's the thing. I can't even remember the freaking game, dude. It was, uh, uh, Warcraft. No, um, World of Warcraft. Just like it was, it was some character designs, you know? But You're having trouble was, remembering World of Warcraft. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not your type of game. I don't remember who was that or a different, uh, fantasy game, but it, I think I'm pretty sure it was World of Warcraft. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a pretty big game. Oh, Lance Boy yeah, has a super yeah. chat, uh, and Lance says, "I met Tyler around 2011 I, at I believe Motor City Comic Con. I have one of his Top Cat sketchbooks. Great stuff." Awesome. 
yeah, Lance actually, uh, I, I know him from a bunch of shows. He's, you know, there, there are some people uh, and, you know, I know so many people now from the stream, but there were definitely some people that I, I knew from conventions and it's, you know, it was great to be able to catch up with them again here. So. Yeah, but man, like it, it, that's one thing that I really love about conventions is um, getting a little bit of face to face, you know, Yep. Uh, actually putting a face to some of the people that you talk to online and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, just, I mean, you know, <laughs> to be totally honest, just for the sake of your own ego, it's, it's easy to feel like you're drawing stuff, you turn it in, it's gone. And it's, you know, uh, to see that, that people have the books and are, are excited about it and interested in it is so gratifying. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, uh, that's part of the reason I like conventions. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm actually out there doing something. <clears throat> me too. Yeah, I'm doing uh, one show this year. Um, uh, it's Megacon in Orlando. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Considering some of the other ones, but I... I don't know. Many times, like, well, you know, the kids want to go back to Disney, and, and you know, I was supposed to do it uh, last year, and um, I got to go see the new Star Wars ride. You know what I mean? Like, I got to, I think I can do that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's like a, a lot of Mandalorian stuff with the new Star Wars thing. So that's there, my you, thing. Have you been, there? Have you been to the, the Star Wars world or whatever? The no, last time I went to Disney, they were building it, so it was all behind a wall. Oh, okay. Uh, I so, man. I need to go back. That's great. It is a good thing about uh, the Orlando show, is being able to go to Disney World after. Exactly. <laughs> we don't get a lot of perks, comic artists, you know? I wouldn't want to give the wrong impression that we live some kind of... But uh, getting to go to Disney, that's a nice perk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... Going to a convention is cool because you can almost do act as a tourist, you know what I mean, sometimes and yep. and see, you know, even like huge food forces if you get to go like to Europe or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, oh geez, that's yeah. Kind of like amazing. Because you get to meet those fans, but then you also get to go see capitals and stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I go to Europe as much as I can, and hopefully I'll be able to go again. You know, I'm sure we'll all get there again. That's one point, huh? Let's see. So where are you at on yours, man? Are you? Oh, that's sweet. I got another. I got five minutes. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm going to put in some white out, I think, and then another couple little finishing touches. But. <clears throat> Yeah, normally I have uh, I have Meredith who she's reading the questions, and around you know ten o'clock she starts getting pretty bitter. Yeah. She's like, all right, time to be done. The most I've ever pushed it is ten twenty, so <laughs> I might get yeah. there. Michael Johnson Curry is here. Great to see you, Michael. He has a five dollar super chat. And he says, "Hi, Tyler. You have a really great online and social media presence. Advice on a good way to build that up and draw in publishers or editors." Oh. Um What's funny, man, is I feel like it's – I was talking to someone about this recently. Like, it's hard, man. I feel like the Instagram algorithm and, like, the algorithms of these webs, these, these um, social media platforms are just constantly changing. And it's just hard to keep up. And like, I – like, growing it is, is one thing I'm still trying to learn, man. Like, I, I actually ask people, like, how do you have – so many likes on everything. Do I just suck? And I'm just, you know, <laughs> so I uh, know. I mean, but what I do is I, I just try to post a lot, you know, just fresh content all the time. And I've heard if you post like three times a day, like morning, morning, you know, afternoon and night, it actually helps with the algorithm. I don't know if that's true. I mean, that's a little hard to keep up with sometimes, but, um, one thing that I need to do and I was doing this for a while is just go back and post like older pieces, you know, cause you're not always doing you no know, brand new stuff every day, but you're, you have a lot of, like we have a lot of stuff that we could be posting from years ago that, that a lot of our followers probably haven't seen. Yep. So it never hurts to go back and post something that's older because it's going to be new for at least half your followers probably. And sometimes when I post that older stuff, I'll, I'll actually get more engagement. Um, 
yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's different. And especially, you know, nostalgia too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like I just, I'm not good with, sorry. No, I was going to say one of the recent examples, Dave, was like, um, and then maybe it's just because the Loki show is on, but like I reposted this Venomized Loki that I did. Like, I think it was maybe three or four years ago. And it mm-hmm. had a ton of likes, you know, but it's probably just because Loki's really popular at the moment. Um, that's another thing. Yeah, that's just what's, what's popular. <laughs> like, if you did the Ninja Turtles, post it if it's if there's a new movie coming out, you know? Yeah, I did a um, an Invincible drawing on the stream, and I posted that to Instagram, and it did really, really well. And actually, the stream did well, too, and I, I think it's because, you know, the show was out, so trying to learn my lesson with that. I need to start doing baby Yoda all the time. <laughs> yeah. I thought you're, let's see. I thought that, uh, invincible drawing you posted was new. So that, uh, no, it was. Know. Okay. Yeah. It was new, oh, but okay. it, it did better than some other things. And I think it's because, you know, yeah. Yeah. You use the, the method of like, Hey, you know what? This is fresh. People are really talking about invincible right now. So, Let's post about it, man. Yep. Yep. And the more people yeah, are going to share it, they're going to share it with their friends, and they're going to talk about it. They're going to comment on it. And the more, yeah, and then you do, the better. And, and then if they like your work, you know, they'll be interested in it for other things too. And then be, that's how you get them to be fans. But yeah, I think drawing popular characters, it's it's a good way to go. Totally. I'm not the best with Instagram, truthfully. I'm a once every two week poster. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm trying to be better. Your, you built this, this, your YouTube though, man. Like that's one thing I really lack in big time is I have like zero YouTube presence. And I really it, yeah. It's a job. YouTube definitely it's, it's a commitment to, and you know, I haven't exactly been perfect with it to say the least. Um, but yeah, it, that's the one thing about it is there's a, a, I had to get lights and the whole works. There's, there's that part of it. Uh-huh. And then, and then, yeah, just putting out content, you know, and making sure to, to be consistent, which again, I haven't been perfect with, but I, I've been better than I thought it would be. I really thought, okay, I'm going to crap out on this in five, five weeks, whatever, but I've been enjoying it so much. It's been actually a lot easier than I thought to, to keep engaged. Yeah. See, I thought I was going to have to go even just for this, this stream day. I was like, crap, I need to get a whole camera set up and, and a mic and, and hopefully my phone's been doing the trick. I don't know if I'm talking too loud. Or if it's, you know, no, actually, you sound great it. considering it's a phone. I mean, I bought this yeah. whole expensive microphone. I think we sound exactly the same. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> And then I was just hoping that because I, you know, I, I didn't know if I was going to need to have like a dual camera kind of set up or something, but it's it's been okay. Yeah, yeah. I think you know if you're doing it for a while, then it's worth maybe getting some of the the, the other stuff. But yeah, you don't need any of it to, to start for sure. If but then you know the the, the problem is it it really is a like I find I'm I've always got work that I need to do, and I just have days where I'm like okay. Um, I have a choice. I can draw the page that is behind or I can do the YouTube content that I need to get done and I can't do both. And, you know, sometimes the YouTube stuff just has to win out. And, it, you know, it, it doesn't pay like work. Yeah. But I think it, it pays off in different ways. Because mm-hmm. how, how long have you been doing the, the YouTube stuff? Only like a year right, or something? Yeah, just over a year. I started again in um, in May uh, last year. So yeah, not that long. I don't know. What I don't know is how long you can do it before people are so sick of you they just stop watching. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't go away, people. That, like, organically, like it'll just be like, um, yeah. You know where? Hello. I think it's it's inevitable at one point. You know, and I'm such a worrier that you know. I, I waste all of the time. I think things are going pretty well. Just worrying about that. It's just how it goes. <laughs> That's probably how I would do it. Yeah. Let's see. What was I just doing? Did you ever lose track of like, what you were just drawing? And you're like, um, 
Hopefully, I'll find it later. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but I, luckily, I, I remembered this. Like, I knew I just did some whiteout, but couldn't remember what I was doing. So, so I am yeah. almost done. Yeah, that's looking. That's just just sick, man. Uh, thank you. It's an awesome character to draw. This is a character, really, I could spend, you know, all day just on one character. That's, yeah, that's, see, that, that's, that's, that was why I went this route, Dave. Was, I was like, this is a character that I would like to draw, because, like I said, I like drawing mask characters anyways. Yeah. And just, just gear and, like, you know, <laughs> a little bit of cloth, a little bit of fabric, you know, some guns, some, some blades, and then, you know, just pouches. <laughs> yep. Nothing wrong with pouches, man. No. No, Frank Miller did Batman with pouches, and it was awesome. You remember, the, like, the Dark Knight Returns got the pouches around the leg? That became such an image thing after that. So, if Frank Miller could do it in Dark Knight Returns. Oh, yeah. That means that you can do it anywhere. Yep. Darmex has a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much, Darm. And he says, "Happy to meet Tyler at Heroes Haven Comic Shop in Florida and bought his thick art book." I miss that <laughs> store. I don't know if he means thick like it, the book was thick or thick like, you know, awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I guess like... you could use that. You could use that both ways, huh? Yeah, I um, think so. Gonna, uh, that one, I'm thinking he meant actually thick because it was like three hundred and some pages. Okay, um, yeah, it's thick. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a it was a brick, man. That. It was a pain to ship, man. I'll tell you that. Don't ever put a book out that's that's that heavy because anyone overseas or you know out of the U.S. they it, the shipping was just just outrageous. For me. Oh yeah, well I, I started really liking prints at conventions as opposed to art books, just for the just trying to lug them from the hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have to, you can get prints made like in the you know in the city that you're in. If you really have to, but not that you want to do that. But I've actually had to do that one time in New York. Yeah, no, I've I've had to do that. Definitely been there too. Got my Friday right. night in Kinko's or something. So. <laughs> Tagamo Model Works. Good to see you again, Tagamo. Well, I mean, we saw you earlier too, but good to see you again. Again, uh, has a five dollars super chat. Thank you very much. He says I really enjoyed this. Oh, I lost it. We have another one from Evil, and I'll get there in just a second. He says, uh, seeing the different styles of the same character is awesome, plus listening to your experiences is priceless. Yeah, this was actually, this was really a lot of fun for me, and it's it's always so interesting, you know, to uh, to draw a picture like this and then just, you know, yeah, I need to white out some things here, but uh, to see it uh, drawn by you, Tyler, and uh, see how Eric has come along with his, which we'll have to check that in just a second, too. Uh, I don't see his hand moving, so he might be done. I'm not sure. Oh, there it is. It's moving. Okay. I can see him in the green room, so we'll check on him in just a second. I'm going to have to give that a couple of coats. But, yeah, uh, seeing what you did with yours, it's it's uh, it's making me think I should have went for a more dynamic pose that looks amazing. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, no, yours, yours is so, so sweet, man. I love it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So Evil One has a two dollars super chat. He says the Finch flock will never get sick of your vids. Ah, you know what? I love you, Evil One. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll never get sick of doing them. So you know, as long as you guys are still there to watch them, I'll be happy to keep doing more. All right, we're, we're gonna check on Eric and see how he's doing. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Some good awesome. yeah. Yeah, I think I'm, I might have missed some super chats earlier. Sorry about that. But uh, well, we're definitely doing our best. And keep an eye on it. Yep. <laughs> a bit of a vision. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, Love nice. it, man. So, yeah, it looks like you're you're just about finished, eh? Yeah. It's about as far as I'll probably be able to. And uh, see, so you know what I would do? I would just fully black out that kilt just like that because that his kilt. Like when I first drew it, I was like, "Oh, what was I thinking?" You know. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's typically what I I would do, and then I'd go in with some white out or something, some white detail, and indicate stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use the side of the pencil a bit, but then I was like, you know mm -hmm. what? Let me just go and finish up here a bit. So. Awesome, man! I love it. 
It's so yeah. cool seeing you guys draw these characters. It's so cool. Yeah, this has been an, a lot of fun. This has been great. And thanks again, Eric. Yeah, um, thanks so much. Yeah, there we go. Um, we have a, a $2 super chat from Greg L. Static Art. And thank you so much, Greg, and great to see you here. Uh, he says, haven't said this a lot the stream, or haven't said a lot the stream, but these look great yet. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't seen you here so much so far. But you know what? Also, I see Sheldon Martin's here. Um, it's been a little bit difficult. One Mighty R is here. Um, uh, David Finch, Netflix is calling. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's without Meredith, it's a little difficult for me to keep up with the chat, and I apologize for that, everyone. Um, but I, I thought that you guys would really enjoy hearing from Tyler and, you know, getting his point of view, seeing the tools that he's using, and really just, I mean, seeing that incredible looking picture. Uh, it's, um, those are beautiful things. I can't believe how amazing that looks. It looks so quickly done. Yeah, it's great. On, is, is that splatter? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Well, I, I always got my, I always got my brush. My, that I, dude, I put splatter on, on almost everything now, just because I just feel like it adds just that extra little. It does. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah, that's an awesome looking picture. Well, this actually, you know what? I knew this would go well. I like. I was excited about doing this one. I knew this would be a lot of fun. Um, but I think this went, you know, better than I expected even. So uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. And uh, yeah, we, we definitely owe you one big time, Tyler, for, for coming on. Oh, Jazz Singh is here. Jazz Singh, Tyler, he's a uh, an artist working for Page One Comics. He's incredible. He's doing really, really nice work. So, and he just started getting work this year. So yeah, it's always uh -huh. nice to see him here. Awesome. I'll have to look, I'll have to look his stuff up for sure. Yeah, he's, he's very, very good. Um, so, yeah, everyone, please uh, check out Tyler's uh, campaign for uh, Final Boss. Uh, the link for that, I think, is in the top of the chat. But I know for sure that it is in the description here. And, uh, yeah, it's a great-looking book. Um, and it's doing great so far. But I think this is, this is something you definitely don't want to miss out on. Um, there are a lot of extras and bonuses that you can get in on. So yeah, definitely, definitely check it out and give not only a, a great artist, but you know, a good friend of mine, somebody I've known for years and years, a fellow top, fellow top cow artist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of solidarity there and, uh, and yeah, and yeah it, I, mean, it, I really appreciate you having me on Dave. Like this is, this is so cool. I mean, I, I never thought I'd be freaking drawing, uh, with David Finch. This is awesome, man. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is, it's great. You know, and I, I mean, I know so many artists. I know you do too. And it feels like we never really get to collaborate and it's, it's kind of cool to be able to do this. Absolutely. And I'm so definitely hopefully... going to use your piece, man. Like if, uh, if, if, if any of you guys back final boss, just count on getting a, a print or something from, you know, that piece right there that Dave just did because it's amazing. Now I really want to put Eric's piece in somewhere in the in like the back too. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Finish that yeah, up, man. Give me a scan of that, Eric. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll make sure we uh, we get you scans of both of them. And uh, yeah, thank you again so much for for coming on and, and doing this. And hopefully we can have you gone uh, have you on again. Uh, yeah, let's do a digital session, Dave. That'd be really cool, actually. Yeah, I'm in for it. I think everybody watching, especially considering it's just not something that that I do, and I know so many people that watch did work solely digitally. So I think it'd be really valuable for people. I need to get an iPad. I think I need to just get on that. So because I'd, I'd really like to be able to follow what you're doing. Maybe not on the screen. I think we would just have you working on the screen for that one. Um, uh -huh. But I'd like to at least be able to follow. There's, yeah. I just find there's so much to learn doing that. So absolutely. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much. And thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week coming up um, and, you know, enjoy the warm weather. I think it's pretty much warm everywhere, right? <laughs> All right. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Eric, you want to say something? Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. It was, uh, I really like uh, what, what Tyler's got going. It really reminds me of Streets of Rage. Uh, Tyler, yeah. I know there, there's a new Streets of, Streets of Rage game out as well that you might want to check out. But uh, yeah, um, I'm really excited for your book, and I hope it does really well. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Thank you. And Tyler, is there anything you, you want to say before we, we head out? 
Yeah, I mean, just you know, again, thank you, thank you so much for having me on here, and and to all you, to all you guys that tuned in and and um, sat and watched this draw, and you know, talk about art and final boss, and um, I, it's always a blast talking old like basically like top cow genre stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just fun. I I hung out with Ryan Stegman a couple of weeks ago, and we all we did was talk about you know '90s comics, top cow, Wildstorm, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri. And it's just so fun, man. Like, there's just a lot of memories there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I miss those days a lot. I miss the studio days. Totally. But, yeah, no, thanks again, everyone. That's that's it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Good night again. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, hopefully next week. See ya. Bye.